We are live. We are what live. Up, everybody. Hi. Hello, Howdy. everyone. Happy Thursday. Yeah, happy Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a couple of technical things to work out there. Uh, so, but we're here. We're live, ready to go, doing some film reviews. I'm joined by my best good buddy, Nick Miller. And wait a sec. Nope. It's not. <laughs> It's Larev Films. Okay, Larev and Blake. Uh, that's that's okay, I guess. So no, Larev Films is here with us today. Lindsay, how in the heck are you, Blake? How in the heck are you, Lindsay? You can go first. Uh, sorry, I I uh, I can hear. I, I, don't, I got I got lost uh, on the way to the bathroom, and I, I can also hear myself. How do I fix this? <laughs> are you? Uh, is your? I got it. I got it. I got it. I fixed it. Okay. Good. Wow. Down. We we are nailing this so far. <laughs> Let's just act like we're just starting. Three, two, one, starting. Hey guys, what's up? It's John. I'm here today with my buddies Blake Polino and Lindsay Conklin from Larev Films. Why don't you guys say hello first? Why don't you, uh, Lindsay from Larev Films, the celebrity wedding filmmaker, the luxury wedding filmmaker? How'd we get him here? I don't know, but he's here. How are you doing, Lindsay? Uh, I'm a professional. Yep. Yes. Great. Yep. <laughs> good we're nailing it that's great uh you you doing are you in you're in california right now you're at home i'm in california it's uh it's rainy right now it's raining in california believe it or not mm -mm. Um, which is good we like the rain when we get it and uh i'll take it so yeah listen nice. to a little taylor swift this morning <sighs> folklore album by chance evermore Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Respect. Yeah, cherish, yeah. cherish. Put that on. Um, on, we. I got her a record player for our, our anniversary this week. So yeah, you did. So we got Evermore on vinyl, and we were listening to that perfect rainy day yep. music, or so Incredible. my wife tells me. It is. That's good music. That's great. And then also we have our good buddy Blake, the editor down in Texas. How are you, friend? What is up, everyone? Uh, I'm excited to be on this side of the camera today. Yeah, I know. I'm excited to see you in your perfectly lit room. It's great. Um, Nick is out this week, so I called in, you know, the big guns with the two of you to kind of help for film reviews. Uh, we had a ton of you all submit films. We're going to try to get through as many of them as possible. If you're watching and you've never done this before, never seen us do this before, we don't just watch the films and stop them through the way. We watch it all the way through, and then we have a point system. We have five different categories, and we give scores between one, two, three, or five, five being the best. We have cinematography, audio sound design, editing, color, and story. Um, I read those out of order, but there you go. We give you a rating based on those, and the way that we give those ratings is that a three would be your industry standard. This is going to be a great film. There's not much to like. There's nothing much that's needing a lot of work, but nothing about it or, or nothing about it's like setting the standard for the industry or whatever. And so whoop, those um, are out of order. Sorry. Starts at five. Oh, so, whoop, OK. <laughs> We're great at this. <laughs> We're good at this, guys. <laughs> a five is like the a five is the top score. If you're a professional, just put I'm a professional in the comments. You know how this goes. But we are uh, a five is we give this out if you literally are setting the entire standard for the industry of this. You can't really get any better than this. That's a five. A three is going or four is above average. Uh, three is going to be an industry standard. It's going to be good. It's not going to be uh, mind blowing, but you're doing a great job. Two is a little below industry standard, needs some work uh, on the execution, the knowledge. Um, it's it's okay, but it could use some work. And then a one would be, okay, this thing really needs some attention in this area. So you'd be far below the industry standard. You really need to up your game. Our point with doing these systems, uh, this, this point system is not to uh, say that we've got all fives on all of our films. That's not the truth. Uh, but it helps us to kind of break down areas that you can be looking at. Um, and we don't think we know everything. We don't think we're the best. Uh, that's not our heart. Our heart is to be helpful. So we will give critiques. We'll try to be uh, a soft around the uh, the critiques if we need to be and stuff like that. But um, if you do get a high score, uh, Blake, um, I don't know if you have those kind of averaged out, but we did them last time with um, if if you're averaging, we're going to we'll put that up on the screen. A 38 or a 45 would be an honorable distinction or a how to film wedding selection. If you get a 45 
uh, between two people. We're going to have to do 2.5 or three people, whatever. Uh, we'll have to get that number back. I'll write it out here in a second. But um, if you if you get a one of those high scores, you're going to get featured on our page. You get a badge for your website. All good things. All good things. So spoiler alert. I'm going to give everyone a five. Good. That's great. That means that you know that you've given a good critique. You can <laughs> trust just it. Give everybody an A. Good job. <laughs> Everyone's favorite teacher is Lindsay. No, uh, anything you guys want to add before uh, we get going? I got one more announcement to make, uh, but other than that, anything you guys in, uh, want to add? You guys good? I'm good. I'm ready. Okay. Uh, the last thing is that Love Stories TV is the sponsor of this uh, month's live stream. And if you didn't know, they have extended their um, applications for the Love Stories TV Film Awards to March 3rd. Um, so if you head on to lovestoriestv.com, you can submit your films there and tell them we sent you. Okay. I'm ready for film number one. Blake, who is film number one? You guys uh, ready? Yeah, I think I'm ready. Film number one. Um, you know what? Let me just let me just show it to you first. You okay. Know. I think I'm ready for this. Heck yeah. With E-Trade, you're ready for anything. Marriage, kids, college. Kids moving back in after college. Finally, we can eat. You know you make me wanna. And then we looked around and said, wait a minute. Great this isn't lighting. even our stroller. <laughs> you live with your parents. What is House happening? Mm -hmm. Cool. I don't get it. Here's to getting financially ready for anything. And here's to being single and ready to mingle. Who's ready to cha-cha? Hey, hey, hey. All right. Okay. Uh, Just the first, what first do we guys film. think? So I feel like that window light on those shots right there, very nice. Really, uh, really good. Lindsay's giving it, it a five. I give it a five. I give it a five. A five. I feel like the, the character development really really hit if you know i felt like oh i'm in i'm interested in this uh i don't know i felt like overall it was good I, i'm gonna give it i'm gonna give it fives across the board that's good also if you work for e-trade and you want to sponsor us we might uh <laughs> you might hit us up <laughs> that's funny i didn't know blake was going to show that video no one knew that yeah so color five six color, yeah color Wait, can we five. talk about this toast lighting though i mean come on guys yeah that's like, a nice hair light those kickers back there yeah, that's nice just got just some great... i would have put the mic on a stand just so he wouldn't have walked around and but it's fine it's yeah. fine i'm wondering how this uh not wireless <laughs> mic is working in this situation wait a minute i mean yeah audio sounded great so five fives across the board i'm just kidding guys that was just uh oh geez can we i wonder what a... i wonder what less a... they use yeah, they're probably using the Rev Lutz. I think you can find those on gamut.io. Uh, gamut.io, right yeah. Yeah. Those so. were definitely, definitely the Rev Lutz. So, skin right, stone, the skin tones do look youthful, Becca. That's true. Okay. <laughs> very youthful. All right. So, this first film, uh, for real this time, Brooks Soto, uh, East and Ivory Films. Ooh. And let's do it. Oh On September 23rd, 2022, your lives changed forever. Nate, you built up the courage to speak to Taylor in your ask her a question. Would you marry me? And Taylor, you already had the answer in mind, didn't you? It was a radiant yes. And then, of course, today is going to be another day that's far different than any other because today, your lives are going to change forever. This is our time. It's a crazy cosmic journey. I feel fine. Something so right. Taylor, you've set the bar really high when it comes to the standard of friendship that you give. And I have no doubts that you're going to do just the same in this new role that you're stepping into as a wife. Wow, Taylor looks like a TikTok bride. This is our time. I'm feeling alive, and I don't want to lose it. Nate, you've quickly become part of the family. You're just the guy for the quick, witted, dry humor joke when we need you. You balance our friend group so perfectly, and you make my best friend the happiest I've ever seen her, besides when she's with me. 
Get the two of you married. I, Nathan Russell Latin, take you, Taylor Caitlin Niels, to be my wedded wife. I, Taylor Caitlin Niels, take you, Nathan Russell Latin, to be my wedded husband. To love and to cherish. And to deeply respect. For as long as we both shall live together on earth. According to God's marital arrangements. <laughs> My happy pleasure to introduce you to this marriage gathering, brother and sister Latin. Oh my good Lord, what a feeling! All of this joy I've been stealing. We all need someone, someone that can make us believe. My lords, my ladies, tonight you find yourselves equal. For you're all equally blessed. For I have the pride, the privilege, nay, the pleasure to introduce to you a couple who, although recently married, is loved as his oldest time. thinking what is more modern than meeting your future husband on a zoom blind date <laughs> that's got to be the most modern way to meet a man <laughs> but who knew that that little virtual date would lead to today your wedding <laughs> i first met them on the shores of jersey beach where taylor was first trying to figure out why oh why Nay, grew that mustache. Stay just a bit longer. We can talk about it later. Ooh, be a little, just a little closer. No, no, no. Stay. So now, here they are, the Latins. Now! Great job, Easton Ivory. Blake, um, if, I know you're messing with stuff. If you don't mind, like looping that while we're talking, yeah. just so I can keep going. Um, okay, we're gonna start out uh, with cinematography. We're looking for technique, skill, camera use of camera, the style of the shots, um, the creativity with cinematography. Um, Lindsay, are you in a, a headspace to kick us off with a score on this, or do you want me to do it? Just you know, I know you want to be the nice guy. You know, um, I don't know if I can judge this uh, film. Uh, Fairly, you know, Brooke. I, I can't I can't be unbiased because I, I know Brooke. I've known Brooke since she was uh, born, but For but I'm going to do my best across the board. I'm going to try my I'm going to try my best. Uh. Um, no, I, I mean, I think cinematography was was really great. I, I felt like it felt like it matched the vibe of, of the couple. I felt like it matched even like the vibe of of the colors and, and the setting, the location where they're at, you know, um, the handheld was really nice, not too shaky. In my opinion, you could still see what's happening, but it felt organic. And yeah, I thought it was really good. I agree. Um, okay. So scale one to five, do you have a number that you've got? Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to give that a three. I think it's, right. I think it's standard. I, I think it's, on par with some of you know the the best in the uh, the industry. He's got a freaking huge three uh, on your face. I can't keep. It. Lindsay came with his own graphics. Yeah. This is the first. For I'm him. gonna give it a three. Um, just just wait until somebody gets the Guatemala. You know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh, <laughs> the Guat. Um, oh, it's never gonna stop. It's never gonna no, stop. I, 
No, I give it a, I get, I gave this a three. I think it's, I think it's really, really solid. You know, yep. um, the shots were solid. I'd be happy if my wedding video looked like this. Sadly, it does yep. not, but yeah, yeah it's great. Rick, where were you at for Lindsay's wedding? Oh, you probably weren't. Yeah. She was 12 when I got okay. married. Yeah, yeah. She was no. there. I believe. Oh, cool. Maybe cool. she wasn't. Her mom was there for sure. Um, I don't know where to go with that, but I know what I would like to say about this. So on the cinematography side of things, I do feel like it was solid. Um, the thing, like I, I'm, I also gave this a three. Um, and the thing that to me would have taken it to the next level, just a little bit more eye candy, a little bit more something. It was all great. There's nothing really to complain about. There were a few shots that stood out to me just on like what was in the background or what, like just the, the speeches seemed like there was like a literal PA speaker behind the speech giver facing one way. The light was, there's some things that could have been done better. Um, there was a shot of them dancing and there was a bunch of like a buffet table with like a bunch of buffet trays, little things like that just kind of pulled me away from it being like taking it up to a three and a half or a four. Um, but overall, I think it was very solid. We've got a three. Blake, what about you? I'm going to say three as well. Um, I, you know, definitely think everything was solid. Uh, there were just a couple of things. I think as filmmakers, we all have a tendency to overuse like one particular motion um like i know for me it's this like handheld shot where i'm just doing this slight little pivot uh -huh. and like i will i will run that's... that shot into the ground yeah what's wrong um, with that i know but i like it'll be every single shot and there's it's just there's a lot of tilt <laughs> like i just kept seeing the tilt like happening over and over and over again um but i thought it was really really good really solid uh this may end up in the editing but just like some really some real noise um in the reception on some of the images but um i thought it was super solid yeah, that's that's the other thing too. Just like it was good, like industry standard, they're going to be so happy with it. They're going to have zero changes. There's just some little things that take it up uh, to that next. Like there's grain in those shots. It's so yeah. dark, or like some some of that stuff. Yeah. Um, angles of speeches, like thinking of those kinds of things. Exit signs in the backgrounds. Those little things just, uh, you know, take it to the next level. Okay. Um, up next is audio. Blake, I'd love for you to start on audio and sound design, sound effect. What do you have on this one? So I think overall it was good. I was, uh, I landed on a three on this one. Is it just being standard? Like I was kind of wanting some more sound design, you know, like environment thing, things like that. Uh, the only real like problem I had was with, and this may again go into editing with some of the, uh, the cuts. A lot of times, like I was hearing someone talking and I had no idea like who it was. So like maybe more J cuts or L cuts, like cutting back and forth. Uh, to who that person was maybe a little earlier um, in the process. Uh, it sounded good. Like there were some parts where it was definitely like, it seemed like it was scratch audio from the camera. Um, but I think that was worth it. Uh, now we're watching framed art. <laughs> for some reason. We are professionals. Uh, we are professionals. We do this for a living. Um, we are professionals. But yeah, that was. That was <laughs> uh, I'll go next on audio. I'll give Lindsay a break to think for a sec. Uh, on the sound design and stuff, like I feel like with the Super 8 that you had here, I heard like little noises, little sound effects. That's next level. Like, you know, that's, ta that's way better than like what you'd see in factory standard. I do feel like the levels of the music compared to the dialogue a few times there was like harder to hear the music should have come down and my big complaint about the audio there were several times where like the ducking was really fast to where the song was going just great and boom it pulls it down real fast and it kind of like makes you you know want to lean forward towards the camera or something like that so like take your time with those fades uh you know and not do those so fast so they're not so jarring unless it's like a very intentional thing i gave this a three as well yeah, I I, uh, I also gave this a three. Uh, <laughs> you clicked with the right hand and pointed. The... So um, cheesy. I, so I do think there were I do think there were things that um, <laughs> that were like above a three, but then yeah. there was things that were below a three, and so kind of the average was three. Like, yeah, just being intentional with the the audio for the you know that super eight feel like that's above average but yep. but then like what you talked about john that that audio ducking super harsh really kind of takes you out of it it was and it was almost like it was not only was it too harsh but also the audio level i think was too low too it wasn't really balanced very well um yep. so that was more like a two two and a half but overall um yeah i, I think uh, audio Love and it. sound design was a three 
Cool. I'll take over, start the next one, the editing. Um, I gave this a three and a half. Um, and I feel like for what it was worth, if we're talking, if we were talking about, you know, the, the group of friends, we saw shots of the groups of friends. Um, there were some things you did obviously with the super eight and infusing that into it. And just like the, the, just the overall edit that you put together to me, I feel like it was a little bit above, um, the industry standard. I think you, you went above and beyond on some things. Um, the reason I didn't give it a fourth is similar to the on the cinematography side of things. I feel like you could have edited out some of the things or, or done something like not included certain uh, things like the exit signs and the stuff like kind of uh, just the distractions on the edit or the uh, the way that um, it kind of goes in, you know, with the cinematography a little bit, but just uh, thinking through the the 180 rule and all that stuff and way you put certain things together. There's a few shots in there that were just like, oh, that's just a wide shot out of nowhere or s that kind of thing. But overall, I think it was um, I think it was definitely better than what you see in like a standard uh, edit out there these days. Blake, Lindsay, who wants to go next? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I again. Kind of the same thing with the audio. There were certain things that I felt were above average. Like there was one shot um, I liked when it showed like the reception area right here, empty, and then it kind of fills it up. Like that's cool. That shows some thought behind your editing. You're not just slapping behind uh, or slapping, you know, a bunch of random clips together. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Again, it, I, I feel like it, it matched the vibe of the couple. And ultimately that's what we're trying to do is we're, we're serving our clients, right? So I think that they probably love this film it totally matched their energy um you know the music uh it, it matched the music and it just was mm -hmm. a lot of fun and it felt like felt like them so i i gave this a three as well um just so you know oh, geez. <laughs> all right blake what you got uh, uh i i don't want it to feel like i'm just picking the easy way out on this but i went three again on this one um, just, it really felt, you know, really solid, like really middle of the road. Like there wasn't anything that I, that just jumped out that was like, Oh my God, you got to change this. Like right now, this is, uh, like way below standard, but at the same time, there wasn't anything like on the editing side, particularly that I was just like, Whoa, that was like really next level or, um, like just super complicated or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I thought it was like super solid. The other things I had just kind of talked about before, um, like in the cinematography and stuff, like maybe throwing some D noise on some of these things and, um, cutting some of the things out. Um, uh, somebody asked in the comments if we knew if this was Super 8 for real, if it was Super 8 faked. Um, yeah. Pretty sure it was an overlay, but um, if I'm really, yeah. really honest, I've, I've never shot on real Super 8 or any real film at all for that matter. Uh, so I really don't know. Lindsay probably knows. Yeah, that's definitely not real Super 8. Uh, it's definitely an overlay. I was going to kind of touch on that in my my story section but i guess it's yeah kind of it seems like editing. a perfect segue well, into story segue into story <laughs> hit it hit us with it Lindsay. Let's story go. so i i do like how uh uh brooke and ray used the uh overlay is kind of like bookends like it started with that and then it ended with that like and it shows the the engagement i think they used um i think they used the audio really nice to kind of tell the story mm -hmm. i will say personally I am not really a fan of the super eight overlays um, because it's just, it's so overdone. <laughs> um, if you're going to do it, do it for real. Like get, get a super eight camera, get a 16 millimeter camera um, and, and kind of, you know, do it, do it for real instead of doing just the, the, the fake overlay. Um, it seems like people are just doing it just to do it nowadays. So um but other than other than that i thought i thought they did a pretty good job uh of telling the story and using uh using the uh uh the audio bits nicely mm -hmm. do you have a score that you're going to put up on your face <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> it's by the way this is the only graphic i have I it's have three, only threes that's I it three in guatemala that's all <laughs> yeah I have. that's great no uh i'll pop in on story as well um uh, similar it's like the editing the story kind of they all kind of go you know with each other i feel like 
you did a good job with their story. Um, I like that you kind of set the vibe of their story and their day kind of being a little more, um, you know, organic and natural day and not too uptight. And like the super eight, you know, kind of started, it was like, okay, this is going to be a, like a more outdoorsy adventure kind of, or like, I don't know, like they're just a chill couple. We're not trying to like, you know, show off just this luxurious thing or anything like that. I do also feel like, asking what is the point if you're going to do the super eight like is, is there a point trying to like and, you know show off just i'm hearing myself twice a thing or anything like that i do also feel like oh what happened did you hear it, me twice it wasn't it wasn't me this time let the <laughs> record show that we are professionals me. uh good. i guess weird i was like that guy's voice sounds extremely sexy who's t- oh it's me that's what that sounds so good um i i give blake a 1.5 um, <laughs> for my oh, production man. ability production ability uh, of this live stream at least it was a uh, point five. story was solid i liked the i i feel like you did a good job with story there was a few things about it that like a little more than a three a little less than a three so i ended up also with a three is that, that right no this way yeah. I can't put it on you. I'm trying to, but I can't do it. It's okay. All right, Blake, story, if you're still with us. Yeah, I, I want to go two and a half just to not have us all do threes. But um, I, I think like your clients loved this film. Like I'm sure that is, this was perfect. It represented them really, really well. And I feel like it told their story. Um, I didn't really like like feel anything. Like it didn't make me like really uh, feel moved or... Uh, the guy, the groomsman who gave the speech from a knight's tale, 10 out of 10. Like that was, that was great. Um, but yeah, I think I, I land on a three on it as well. Like just wasn't like, uh, and that's really kind of hard to control. Right. You know I mean, sometimes people don't, don't have these like, you know, amazing stories to tell. And sometimes it's but just like the it for is. the story, like she was talking about the zoom call or things like that could have been fun to somehow incorporate yeah. stuff. Like just to take that story to the next level. It felt like. There were bits and pieces of like, oh, that's cool. That's their personality. Mm-hmm. But it never like built to it. It never like climaxed to that point. It never. It was just kind of like, oh, this is like, yeah. this is good. It sounds good. It looks good. It's fine. Um, but nothing really stood out as like, okay, that they did. A, they took that story to the next level. They did. Totally. Um, and and the kind of just, yeah, I mean, it was fine. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't like mind blowing. So, um, all right. Last is color. Um, I I can start on this one. I feel like the color was really great throughout the film. I think they kept it really consistent. Um, not my style of color necessarily, but also I feel like it fit the vibe. They, um, the, I'm looking at the shots at the reception right now, which is hindering, like morning making, but it's fine. But like, if you would have brought in a little more light, um, obviously, and been able to shape that color or shape the light and color, um, that would have helped it. But um, I gave this one a three and a half. Um, I feel like it was better than um, your industry standard. That framed art's hilarious. Um, I feel like, you know, you, it was consistent throughout, especially all the outdoor stuff. Um, I would, I don't think there were any reception lights. Um, and my thoughts when it comes to reception, it, it felt like overhead lights were maybe on for speeches or um, it, you didn't like take those next steps to like dim the house lights, bring in your own speech lighting, light the dance floor, control light a little bit more. It was just, it seemed very like low key uh, production wise, which is fine, but the color does suffer whenever you do that. So I gave it a three and a half. Who was up next? Blake? I got to go just straight three on it. I thought it was really solid. Like it, everything matches really well. Like there wasn't like, shot to shot where I was like, Oh, this feels like a completely different film. Um, agreed. Like not particularly super my style on it, but it was, um, uh, I thought it was really well done that the back to the, uh, this kind of goes back to the editing and cinematography of it, but like for the reception, um, you know, when it, when your exposure, ch- exposure changes a lot, uh, that does a lot to your color and it just changes the way that your color looks in like the shadows and in the highlights and stuff like that. And, um, I think that's the only thing that really brings it down on color and it's not that they colored it any different. It's just the way that kind of, it was exposed and kind of gets really noisy, but, um, everything matched really good. I thought it was a good representation of the couple. Like it didn't feel like it was a dark and moody couple, but they were like this super bubbly, you know, uh, feel, yeah, anything feel, like that. I thought I it was great. Like they did a really good job. I mean, like yeah. they, the colors are very even and very smooth yeah. and very good. I, I, I've, that's why I'm a three and a half and I think you're wrong. Blake. I think you should bump it to three and a half. All I right. Gotta go. I, gotta, I gotta say three. I'm going to give, I'm going to give it a three and a half. Woo! Uh, 
you know, just to be like John. Um, no, I, I think, yeah, again, it, it felt like the couple, this, this couple feel, especially, you know, he's got the mustache and look at the, the, the suit he's got going on. They're like old soul. Yeah. Nostalgia. Fit the and song I the, really I well. I think the colors, whether or not Brooke does the same color grade for, you know, all of her clients, I don't know, but uh, definitely fit, fit them. I felt like, and um, it probably helped <laughs> you going this route with the color probably helped in, in the tougher lighting scenarios. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I give it a three and a half cause it was very consistent across the board, despite all the different, you know, lighting scenarios that, that they were yeah. shooting. in. So good all job. Right, sweet. Good, good job, job Brooke. Brooke. Um, so Lindsay, I think you gave it straight threes and one, three and a half, which gives you a 15 and a half on yours. Uh, mine was ended up being a 17 and I think Blake's was a straight up 15. Yep. Um, I did the math and, uh, to get the honorable mention, uh, is a, uh, 38 when there's only two of us, but it's a 67 or no, 51. And then, uh, to get like the. The high, the high award is 67.5. It looks like you're at 45, 47, 47.5 for this one. So um, above standard, good job. That math is confusing. We probably should have made a graphic for it. We are professionals. <laughs> good job. Good job, Brooke. This is, good job, Brooke. Seriously, yeah. you should be proud of that film. Um, if, you'd like a, if you'd like a fun fact about Brooke, she mm. used to work for Larev Films many, many years ago when we were back in the day, when we we're doing like 40 weddings a year, she would come in and, and help us uh, do some and calling. She's just and the nicest person that I've very, She's very, so very nice. Sweet. Is that back before it was Larev? What, what did it used to be? No, it was Larev. It was probably Larev Productions then. Okay. We're now Larev Films, but it was Active Klutz. Was active Klutz. Active Klutz. Yeah. How That's do I remember right. that? How? Right. Yeah, I knew okay, it wasn't guys, Larev. It only took us 35 minutes for the first film. <laughs> we'll go faster so uh i want to throw it out there a couple people were asking the comments the scale is a one to five scale three being industry standard five being blow your mind uh industry standard is where a lot of people hit that's great if it's below industry standard you'd be a two or a one and let's get into the next film who is it let's do it all right so this next film is uh by nick divine devine sorry don't know how to pronounce that um yeah, let's jump into it. All right, let's do it. Now, I'm sure some of you are some of you are curious. Why New Brunswick? Well, Olivia's family has a great history here. More recently, Olivia and her extended family continue to come back to New Brunswick and consider it a meeting place to create memories with one another. You're so kind and loyal, a real sister to all of us who are lucky enough to call you a friend. We've been best friends for two decades, and you'll notice that to be true for most of her friends here, because that's the thing with Liv. Once you get to know her, you want to be her friend for life. I can't put into words how beautiful you look tonight. You are radiant. Two other important qualities I would like to mention, and that really helped define Olivia. One, her loyalty. Two, Olivia's capacity to love. Dave is an incredibly loyal friend. And as a person who never had brothers and sisters of his own, Dave has been a brother to me for as long as I can possibly remember. A person who wants nothing but the best for the people around him and who's always there to support them when they need it. Dave would happily bail you out of jail in the morning and recommend you for a job in the afternoon. Not saying that happened to me, but he did give me a very good LinkedIn recommendation. But Dave, when it comes to being your friend, there are no short straws to draw. You're the most loyal guy I know. Most people will talk smack behind someone's back and compliment them to their face. Dave will talk absolute smack to your face and then defend you to the death behind your back. Put on 
Liv, you are such an amazing partner to Dave. I've seen Dave blossom into a softer, kinder, and calmer version of himself, and he's still the Dave we know, know and love. He's just a little harder to rag on. I recently praised Olivia for her fantastic work in getting everything about this weekend so perfect by suggesting she is the family COO or Chief Operations Officer. To which she replied, no, honey, I'm the CEO. <laughs> now, I'm be I believe I'm beginning to understand how this marriage concept works. <laughs> to be honest, there is no one I'd rather call boss. When I'm fighting, would you fight with me? Dave's grandparents, may they rest in peace, and my mother, who couldn't make it tonight, would be extra proud of you and the things that have unfolded. But the most they've been proud of you is the mate you picked in Olivia. It's not hard to tell how much she cares for and loves Olivia. And the good news is, it's not hard to tell how much Olivia loves and cares for Dave. When you're falling, falling out of reach. Olivia and Dave. You fell in love by chance, but you're here today because you're making a choice. You both are choosing each other. You've chosen to be someone who inspires you, who makes you think, makes you smile, and makes every day bright. Olivia, I give you the spring as a symbol of how much I love you. David, I give you the spring as a symbol of how much I love you. Dave, you may break the glass. And now kiss your bride. You are Without further ado, it's my pleasure to welcome for the first time Dave and Olivia Morantz. my Acadian grandmother uh, would recite this poem to me and it felt like a perfect fit for this special celebration. So down by the sea where I seek to be free, I loved her, I loved her, I loved her with all I could be. Lastly, and by far most importantly, thank you to my beautiful wife and best friend, Olivia, or as I call her, Liv or Olive. I've had the most incredible nine years of my life with you, and I can't wait for what's next. As my counsel said so eloquently during our ceremony, when I think of you, I think of my rock, someone who I can count on in the good times and the bad. As most of our shared family said tonight, you're caring, kind, and help everyone around you. You have brought out the best of me, and I love you so much. Thank you always for being here, making me happy, and marrying me. I love you to death. Okay. Who is this by again? Uh, this one is by Nick Devine. Nick Devine, I just, sorry. I Nick, just, I just like I like making you say it since you don't know it. Um, Nick, uh, good job on this film. Um, lots of good things, lots of areas to work on. So let's get into it. Um, cinematography is the first category. Um, the 
the way that you shoot, the way you expose your technique, creativity. Those are the things we're kind of looking for camera movement. Um, you know, just the, the shots that you include, just how you created the cinema side of this. Um, uh, I'll let, uh, let's let Blake go first on this one. Blake, let me throw it to you. Thanks man. Uh, so <laughs> I thought the cinematography was really, um, solid there were just a lot of parts where you could see and we're gonna we'll reiterate this a lot i'm sure throughout a lot of these categories where you were really leaning on um repair in post uh so like there's a, a lot of warp stabilizer that we were seeing and that may be coming from the cinematography side where you're shooting and just wasn't uh super super stable or uh whatever the case was but as far as like composition goes like i thought everything was like really beautifully composed uh like my only real detractors with stuff was it just felt like a lot of times the camera was maybe moving when it shouldn't have been um or like just trying to find different angles or i'm not really sure what it was but um i thought this was a three um on the uh, on that just because like that i didn't have anything i could just like really tear down on i thought it was i thought it was solid there was some like exposure um things that i saw that we'll talk about more in color but um yeah yeah um my thoughts are, are very similar on the cinematography um i put a 2.5 on it i feel like it needed some work i feel like what you're saying is correct i was also looking at some of just like the actual uh you know you said about color with the blown out shots but like shots like uh in where you're, you're filming where the photographer's in the shot and the things that just didn't seem like they were supposed to be in the shot. Um, and that kind of goes through the edit as well. But um, the, I'm, I'm looking at my notes here. A um, lot of, a lot of little things here and there. Um, photographer in the shot uh, used more scratch audio. I wrote down, there was a lot of moments where things were happening where we didn't hear what was happening. Um, just like the overall, I, I know that that's audio. Um, but the light, the lighting, that kind of stuff, I feel like it just needed a, a little bit of improvement. So yeah, I want to go, I want to go back real quick and say something again on mine. Like there yeah. were so, there were so many shots that were like really, really, really good. Like there were a lot of the cinematography was like 10 out of 10. I love it. But then it would cut to a shot that was like a four, right. Where it was like, maybe we just shouldn't have, and this we'll talk about it more in the editing part, but like maybe that just shouldn't have been in there at all. Um, and then back to the exposure part that we just saw and like some of that stuff but i like there's a certain style that you can tell that they're going for uh, yeah which, which is like that high-end like fine art luxury color and it's so it's like pushing the edge of those highlights is really really hard and probably nobody no better person to talk about that than uh yeah and, and you're right you're right on the cinematography i know i'm cutting back in it's like there's some really cool aerial shots some really cool gimbal shots and like i just kept going back and forth on a three or not but there were just feels like to me i'm gonna i'm still sticking with my 2.5 for now over to you Lindsay. can, can i can i go now you can no it. it's actually my turn again <laughs> just kidding just Sorry. kidding just kidding um yeah this one perplexed me in the beginning i thought oh wow this is going to be like some of the b-roll shots right in the beginning like yes really really good and then there were some like even you know some of these ceremony shots are really impressive um that of her walking down the aisle right there but then there was other shots where it was just like Oh, that's really bad. The gimbal movement was really bad. Um, had the same kind of gimbal shot from like left to right. Every shot, just left to right, left to right. You know, so um, I, I struggled with this because there were, again, some shots that were fours and fives and then some shots that were ones and twos. So mm -hmm. um, ultimately, though, I, I will give it I will give it a three. That is, uh, seems to be my go-to because I think it kind of, it balanced safe. out. Yeah. So it is also the, it is the safe answer. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, I definitely like the toasting shots. If, if we were judging it based solely on the toasting shots, it'd be like a one or a 1.5. Yeah. Those could have been really, really improved. I would, I would work on, on uh, your toasting shots for sure. And just, just the gimbal, uh, movement in general, you know, if, uh, yeah. if you're struggling with that gimbal, maybe maybe work on, on that technique a little bit. Yeah. I feel the word that really stood out with what you're saying, there was perplexing. There was a lot, it was like, Oh, and then it was like, Oh, it was like, Oh, it was like, Ooh, that same. I mean, throughout all of, of all of it. Um, yeah. I don't know how many videographers were shooting It almost, maybe there's like two different shooters. I don't know if Nick is in the chat and he can say whether or not he solo shot this. 
Um, yeah, this shot's beautiful. Like, amazing, I mean, like great shot. I mean, the, great the shot. outdoor stuff, the cinematography on that, it's like this is beautiful and great, and not just because the background, but um, just the composure, the way you put it. I mean, the way you. Anyway, I'll talk forever. Let's move to audio and sound design. Um, Lindsay, I will start over with you on this one since you didn't get to talk much. Uh, yeah. What are your thoughts on the audio sound design? Yeah, audio and sound design. I, I gave it a two point five. Um, I don't know if it's StreamYard is like kind of suppressing some of the audio, like trying to do a background noise thing. Um, if Blake can can comment on that at all, but there were some some rough audio bits, especially during the ceremony. Really, really, really rough uh, audio. So I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna get a two point five. There were some again some audio that sounded really great. Some of the toast audio and stuff and mm -hmm. letters being read sounded really good, but um, and also. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. That's all I got. All right, Blake. Yeah, it, it has the same sentiment the cinematography had. Like some of it was really, really good. And like when it sounded good, it sounded great. But when it sounded bad, it sounded real bad. Uh, and I, I wrote a note down, like shout out to the, I guess it was the father of the bride giving a toast and the microphone was laying on the table. So, I mean, like <laughs> it looks like there was definitely some stuff that was out of your control on it. But um, definitely like the, what I said before, like leaning really heavily on, uh, repair in post. It seems like you just maybe were pushing a lot of like denoise or de reverb on it. Um, and that's and so I was hearing it natively here. Like mine's not going through StreamYard, our streaming platform or anything like that. Um, and so definitely some some work on the audio, uh, mm -hmm. like like beach scene. Like I didn't hear any like beach sound design um, it, it mixed in with that either. Uh, so it's like you're really close. Uh, like there's just like because like when it's really good, it's really, really good. Um, so it's just like cleaning up some of these spots and it's a live event, right? It's hard to, hard to control some of that stuff, but you know, making sure you have backups and uh, backups on backups on backups of the audio, I think would definitely have helped. Yeah. It felt like, uh, you tried to do a lot of work to maybe remove some wind noise outside. It felt like, it felt like just very heavily, uh, worked on uh, a little metallic vibe. And, and again, I thought it might be Streamyard or my AirPods or something, um, outside of what you guys have said though. Uh, Blake, did you give it a score? Oh, I, I gave it a I gave it a two on the audio. Um, okay. It just was like, uh, yeah. and probably stuff that was out of their control, but um, we'll get into more of that on the editing side. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I also gave this a two. I feel like this is good. It's okay, but it needs some, some work throughout consistently, and that's why I landed on a two. Um, when it came to the outside of the things you guys were even talking about, there was one speech where it looked like the – uh, the speech, the speech givers talking into the good mic, you captured that. Well, it sounded good. Um, so I almost bumped it to, to 2.5 because of that, Same. but there was a lot of, uh, like just the, the transitions of the music fading to nothing. And uh, like, is the video over? Boom. Here's another song. Yeah. Um, just kind of those natural transitions. If you work on either, you know, somehow fading a little bit better or like overlaying or like transitioning somehow, um, a little bit better. Um, but like, let me see the, the, yeah, that was the other main thing. Uh, the audio transitions, just like cutting from different things you could, uh, a lot of times, um, and this is in the editing, which is next, but it's just like, we, we could hear audio, but didn't know who it was. We could hear clapping. We didn't know who it was. And that's going to kind of flow, flow over into the, the editing, which I can start out. So I gave this one, uh, the audio a two, um, the editing I gave a, I don't, I don't think I've given it anything yet. I didn't write anything down yet. That's great. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I am a professional. You um, start, start us off. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, let me start us off. I feel like on the edit itself, it's it's fine. Um, nothing to me, like I don't have very many notes in here, which to me that usually means I want to give something a three. Um, the thing that I, I'm probably going to land on a 2.5 because you have the power in the edit, even if the photographer gets in front of your shot to like not show that portion of the film or um, just the, the way that certain things are put together. Like I was saying on when we're hearing somebody talk or if somebody says something funny and we're hearing laughing or we're somebody ends a speech and we're hearing clapping. Uh, some of those things to me are just like you edit to show who's talking to help us pull us in. And so like the, that side of things, the edit to me, uh, it was just, there was a lot of little things here and there that, uh, added up to, to make it where I've got a 2.5. I could be pushed into a three. I, I didn't realize I hadn't written down, uh, something on this one. Uh, Lindsay, no, what do you think? I, I, yeah, I agree with you, John. I, I, I also gave it a two and a half, um, because yeah, 
look, I, I realize this is a live event. Even Becca in the comments is like, yeah, this is how things go. It's a live event, uh, you know, and sometimes you can't control that. But um, the one thing you can't control is the edit, you know. So like you said, removing the photographer or even going back into the audio, making the audio sound better, like the ceremony vows audio, like run that through Adobe's AI enhancement, you know, software and it would make it sound perfect. Um, you know, so there's things that you can do in, in the edit that would have made this uh, a lot better. Um, so I gave it a two and a half. I love it. Uh, it bef before you said something about being solid and I wanted to just take a quick break. A lot of people are asking in the comments, Lindsay, just about hair care products for oh, you. Yeah. your hair. Your hair <laughs> seems very solid. solid. Uh, it seems mm -hmm. like it's in a great spot. I do actually have some imagery of your hair yesterday. If somebody wants it, right. send, me, send me a DM to how to film weddings. I took some screen grabs uh, Tuesday. Yeah. Yesterday, I think so. But uh, um, what's your hair, hair care routine real fast. So bel believe it or not, um, he I, wakes up I use, I use a uh, grocery store, uh, hair gel. Um, like I, gotta be glued. I use anything. <laughs> no, it's just like just the big tub. The I knew big, it was you know, the, the tub. tubs that you get at the grocery store. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I used um, to get in like 2002. Yeah. But believe it or not, I honestly, I found that that just works the best for me. I've bought like, okay like store bought or uh, like salon bought gel and it gets flaky. And then I can't do like pomade because my hair is so thick and curly. When I use pomade, my fingers get stuck. Oh yeah. Um, Look at but that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's nice. There you, there you have it. Um, it's also the backlight really helps a lot. You know, it's all lighting. That's good. Do you have an affiliate link or anything for that? I, I do. That yeah. Kit? Okay. Yeah. yeah drop uh, that thanks, in the comments. Thanks a lot for calling me out on that, Becca. <laughs> but I, I will send, I will send Jake my affiliate link for sure. Yeah, Jeez. Oh. We, all right. All right, Blake, over to you. Uh, uh, so editing on this one. Um, Blake, the editor, this is your Yeah, topic. I got, I got to be a little more harsh on this one. So I had to give this one a two on the edit. Um, and Lindsay kind of touched on it. It's a live event. You can't control it, but the edit like you 100% can control. Um, so just a lot, like there's warp on this. Like you can see a lot of warp stabilization on that. Nick uh, Miller has an awesome video on our YouTube about how to make it not wobble like that, uh, which is something you should definitely check out. Um, but like just the overall, like a lot, I love a good cut to black. Like it builds emotion, it builds suspense, uh, but they were just like really jarring. Like it really took me out. It felt like four separate clip videos yeah. that we were watching. And I forgot uh, to mention, I, I didn't like that person. I, yeah. I like that in an in a edit. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with using that to transition from one spot to another. But the Love way it, it went yeah. throughout the whole thing, I, I didn't like that. Felt like a bunch of different films all in once. Yeah, it did. It did. And but like I said, I love a cut to black. Like you can definitely do that and do it right. So it's like you're in the right place. And then there are just certain things where like in the edit where like there's one shot. I, I won't be able to scrub and find it. I should have wrote the, the timestamp. But you cut to the reaction of the couple um and it was just like uh it might be right there but it was like it was warp stabilized and it was like super super wobbly and it was like really really underexposed and it's like you know and you're you're looking for that emotion and trying to tell that story and like i've been there i get it i, I do it all the time like i'm putting a shot that probably shouldn't be in the film because i'm trying to convey that when in reality it probably wouldn't have been the end of the world if it wasn't in there um, so just kind of a, a lot of that stuff where, um, and you probably had a link you had to get to on this that, you know, you were trying to stretch to, or, uh, to include some of that stuff. But, um, yeah, that would be my own difference. Cause like, man, like to be positive on this, Nick, like you're right there. Like, it's like, like the good stuff is really, really, really good. Yes. Um, it's just figuring out how to, uh, I guess, raise the floor, like, you know, how, how low it can go on some of those. It's just getting some consistency in there. And, um, it's like really, really good stuff. Yep. I agree. Um, all right, moving on to story. I can kick this one off. I gave you a three on story. I think it was solid. I think you uh, did a good job of like incorporating speeches. I think you did a good job of like incorporating their vows, telling the story of their day. Um, so I gave this one a three. I feel like there was a shot that you, they said something about the sea and you were showing them at sea. Uh, you, you just kind of did it. You know, you were layering things in there. You were uh, doing what you could with the story that you had. Um, it was solid. It was nothing that was just taking it, you know, over the top by any means, but I don't have very many, uh, other things outside of, I feel like it was, it was solid. He did a good job of like, uh, including sound bites and 
helping to tell some of their story in the day. Room for improvement, sure, but um, I, I went easy on this one. What about you, Lindsay? We can't we can't hear you, Lindsay. Oh, you're muted. Sorry, I was I was muted so I could um, look up my hair gel and send a, a link to Jake. <laughs> um, oh, geez. Yeah, I, I get I give it a three. It's, it's totally solid. But and now I'm your phone's calls. ringing. <laughs> it's Jake. I'm a pro we're professionals. <laughs> Jake. It's Jake <laughs> wanting that hair routine. That's right. Um, yeah, three three is what I gave it, and I don't really have anything more to say because it was just. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It was, it was fine. It was, it was fine. Yeah. I like, went three also on it. I thought it told the story of the couple and it told the story of the day. Um, well, like I didn't really just have anything that was like, you know, it felt like it was missed, but um, I thought the story was solid. The storytelling was solid. Uh, like the location setting was solid and I thought it was good. Cool. Um, all right. Last uh, Lindsay, we'll start with you on color uh, technique the use of color in film, it being uh, even throughout or like helping to tell the story. That's the kind of things we're looking for on color. What do you got? Yeah, again, same thing with like the cinematography. I, I was uh, perplexed by this because some shots like this shot right here, I thought were really, really beautiful, beautiful. Yep. even with the blown out background. That first shot with, um, I don't know if it was a drone shot with the water and the reflection and I just thought the colors really popped through. Yeah, like that shot, I thought, it looked really good. And the next shot with the sunset and the sailboat. Mm, that's, that, that sailboat shot's one of my favorite shots in yeah, the film. It I was know. really so pretty. It was really, really solid. Um, you know, and then it the indoor shots suffered a little bit um just from poor poor lighting in there. But um but yeah, I mean ultimately I thought it was pretty consistent. Um I gave it a three. So uh but like some of that overexposed right there. So again, there are certain shots that were pretty bad. Like the toast shot could have used some lighting, which would have helped the color grading a little bit. Um, so that's where cinematography and color grading go hand in hand and editing and stuff like that. Um, other shots were awesome. So I, I gave it a three smack dab in the middle again. Sorry guys. <laughs> You're hey, you had two 2.5s on this one. You changed it up a little Spice, bit. I don't know spicy. if Nick's happy Three. about it. Yeah. Um, all right. What do you got, Blake? Uh, so I had to go two and a half on this one. Like, wanted to re really, really wanted to go three, but it was just kind of that same thing throughout where it's just like some of these shots, like the color on every single drone shot is five out of five, five and a half out of five. Like, they're flawless. Uh, but then there's some shots where it just like, and it goes back to the editing and the story again, where mm -hmm. You just felt like you had to include it um, for like you felt obligated to or contractually obligated to. So you put it in there, even though maybe it, it shouldn't have been. Um, and it really threw off the consistency. So it was kind of like a roller coaster ride for me as I was writing these scores. And I, would, I would see a shot and be like, oh, that's like 10 out of 10 color on that. And then it would uh, cut to a lot of it was interior shots. I saw in the comments talking about, uh, you know, wanting to use more lights and things like that. That would definitely help. We talked about on the last one. Your exposure has so much to do with your uh the way your color is going to end out um in the end of it so uh, that's why i went uh two and a half like it's there's just like uh, again like right there like just some couple of little tweaks and you're 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 really doing doing well on that yep uh outside of the things you've said uh like the indoor stuff was rough uh like color wise it felt like very green in certain rooms very orange in other rooms uh which is fine uh, the thing that really stood out to me just on the technique side of thing things is just the overexposure in the bride's dress throughout uh like to me maybe it's my screen but the highlights seem really blown out in a lot of the shots um and that like always i always try to expose for the dress if we're outside i mean it's white and you know you're just losing a lot of detail on on it and so like that's just kind of a standard thing for anybody watching or listening is like hey how can we expose for uh, the dress or the whites outside, you know, this shot right here, these shots, there's a lot of the, the data is missing or crushed or blown out or whatever you want to call it. Um, so I, I gave it a three. I think that it, I went back and forth on two and a half, but then I would see the drone shots or the sailboat shot or like the, Same. and I'm just like, ah, so I gave it a three. So um, Blake, what were your first two scores? I didn't write them down. I was, I'm There's a 12 seven. and a half total. total. Okay. And, okay, cool. 
And um, Lindsay, you, have you been putting yours down or do you want me to keep track of yours? I didn't ask you before. I, I have you, it. You were at 14 for this one, right? Uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yes, correct. All right. And I was at a 13. So 12.5 for me, thir- or for Blake, 13 for me and 14 for Lindsay. Um, so room, room to improve. But like, I want to say it because we were like harping on lots of different things. It's like, it's right there on mm-hmm. so many things yeah. that it just like would like keep doing what you're doing. Um, you know, and like make little tweaks. You don't have to change everything at once, but just these little things are going to add up and you're going to be bumping past uh, that standard and into, you know, to infinity and beyond. Just yeah. Brand- up. I like Brandon Rice's comment. He said it all feels like a single focal length. Um, I could see mm-hmm. that. I could see that not, especially those toe shots, you know, not having that zoom lens. And so, you know, a lot of times that's budget and where we are in our careers and being able to invest in certain gears, gear and lenses and stuff. But that would also help kind of up the cinematography as well. One other note that I didn't mention anywhere was there was times where I would see Nick in a mirror in the shot. And like, I don't know if that's on purpose or not, but like, I try not to ever show myself in the reflection. I'm always paying attention right. to if I'm in front of a big set of glass windows or something, I'm getting low. So I'm blocked or so just think about that. Think about your backgrounds. And, um, I, I didn't, I had that written down somewhere, but I didn't say it and I just thought of it. So I want to make sure I didn't yep. miss that one. All right. Ultimately, ultimately it was a great, great film. And I wish my film was as good as that. Agreed. Yeah, my, like, I don't want you my, to feel like we were nitpicking on you. I mean, it's my, just like they're just little things that if you change, it just gets so so much better. And I think we were, I think we were a little harsher because there were so many good shots. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> it, it was the so, contrast of like the really, really right. so like we could see the potential. Like that shot of them mm-hmm. walking on the beach. It's like, oh man, if you can get the entire film to that level, it's right. and again live events. You don't have control of of everything, but just uh, it's right there. It's right there. You're yeah, don't it's, leave encouraged after this film. Yeah, um, seriously. You, you got it. Like the skill is there. Like you have it, you can do it. Just got to like get it all on that same level. Yes. Um, before moving on to the next film, there's a lot of new people that have joined. Uh, we have a grading system. It's not perfect, but it helps us at least to kind of break down different things. Uh, we're grading on cinematography, audio and sound design, editing story and color. Uh, those are our five different categories and we give a score between one through five, three being Good, factory standard, industry standard, great job. Four being like, wow, you took it to the next level. And a five being like, holy crap, this is uh, this is insane. Um, and then also I want to throw it out there. Uh, it's on the bottom of the screen, but Love Stories TV is our sponsor for today's uh, stream. And we want to make sure you know they extended their deadline for the Wedding Film Awards. If you want to submit a film for Wedding Film of the Year, if uh, international film, all kinds of different films, you can head on over to lovestoriestv.com and submit um, right there on their homepage. It's really easy to submit films. I encourage you, if you're here, you obviously like watching films and you like watching film critiques. There's nothing better than submitting your films, getting vulnerable. Um, you know, even if it might be a little rough to hear some of the critiques, uh, it helps you to be better. And submitting your films helps to do that. Um, so, yeah, get out there and submit your films. Uh, yeah. Can, can you submit the E-Trade film to Love Stories TV, Becca? <laughs> you should try. Uh, great plug, John. You're a natural. Thanks, man. Yeah. Also, huge plug for Jake Weisler and Runaway Vows, yeah. Runaway Weddings. Oh, my goodness. If you're not subscribed to their $20 a month course, oh, my. Every day they're putting out something new. You got to head over to Runaway Weddings, Runaway Vows, Facebook group. Okay. Enough about Jake. That's all you get, Jake. Send me a gift card. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Who do we have next? Tell all me, right. it's Becca. It is friend of the podcast. Um, oh man! Oh someone man! Someone who has been on the podcast and are, are still still the Hat of Film Weddings record holder for the most um, f profanity that I've had yeah. to edit out of. <laughs> out yeah, of a thank podcast you for that. Episode. Thank you. We're yes. trying to keep that uh, clean rating on our on our YouTube and stuff. Mm-hmm. So uh, we did not that week. Yeah, we did. <laughs> it, we did. It was just. It was. It was more difficult. All but, right. Let's get it. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. I can't hear it. It's music. There is no music. Shout out Bidflow. And fly from... We are starting a new chapter of our life. And to have everyone come and fly from so far away, from New York, from Australia, to come to our new home, to be with us, it's the greatest gift that we could ever ask for. We 
We love all of you guys. It's humbling that everyone that we love and whose companies that we share could all be in one place. We feel the love that everyone's bringing here. Lauren, the best gift mom and dad could have ever given us is each other. I've been blessed with you as part of my life and tomorrow I'll equally be blessed by gaining a brother too. Lauren and Lou, you give each other permission to be yourselves, you accept each other's imperfections and most importantly you support and encourage each other. You are the perfect match for each other. I'm extremely proud of you, Lauren. Your tenacity, your, your determination to do things. You're just a spectacular grand lady. We have a very strong connection. The beauty of our relationship is that you know, even though she lives in America, I live in Sydney. In part, she belongs to me and, and I belong to her and her sister. From very early on in our friendship, Lawrence, you felt more like family than a friend where things have deeper meanings. And I've seen him move mountains for his friends and his family, but there is no place that I've seen it stronger than with Lauren. The way that he looks at her, talks to her, talks about her, and the look in his eyes when they are together is nothing short of beautiful. You never know how people are going to impact your life. Lawrence, you are the true definition of a friend. You're one of the most selfless people I know. And then came Lauren. I remember when you first started dating and listening to Lawrence describe you, there was something different in how he would talk about you. We are used to loving Lauren obsessively. In fact, most people that know her well would say they feel the same. Our hope was always that Lauren would find a partner in someone that would be more enamoured with her than us. Someone who would delight in her happiness, who would celebrate her, love her endlessly, and match her ambition for experiencing all of life's richness. Much to our pleasure, Lawrence has delivered. He is precisely as Lauren described. Lawrence, you are like no one we've ever met and nothing makes us happier than knowing you've been exactly that to our most treasured friend. You make her smile more widely, her eyes sparkle more brightly, and she is all the more enriched by having you alongside her. Lauren, you told me what you love most about Lawrence is that he's unapologetically himself, very comfortable in his own skin, that he's the most generous person you know in spirit, that he loves to live life and see the happiness in others around him. Lawrence, you told me that Lauren is your home, your everything, and that she makes you laugh harder than anybody else. The lives you two have built together has only just begun. You've been through a lot together over these last five years. You've shared some amazing experiences. I know I speak for everyone here today when I say that our hopes for you both is that you continue to love and support each other through the best and toughest of times, that you continue to be each other's biggest fans, that you don't sweat the small stuff, and that you love yourselves with the same vigor that you love all of us here. By the power vested in me by the state of California, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. The happiness and togetherness which is unique to a family makes everything else almost pale into insignificance. The beautiful part about this extraordinary daughter of ours is that she has balanced her ambition with a duty of care. Her family, her friends and business treat it equally and we love you dearly Lauren. When I met Lawrence, the first thing I saw in his face was kindness. He is generous in his inclusiveness and want to enjoy shared experiences. Thank you for joining our family.
getting to know Lauren over these many years, I can't imagine a better compliment for Lawrence. It's incredible how lucky he is to have found you and how lucky we all are to know you. Lars, seeing you so comfortable and in your element, having met someone that could really share in all of life's pleasures with you was truly magic for me to witness. He's the kindest, most generous, thoughtful man you'll ever have the pleasure of knowing, exactly like Lars. Excitement, curiosity, and wonder for the world and his loved ones. An old school gentleman. Truly, your Lars is perfect match. And watching how happy you make each other, a true partnership grounded in love and respect, I'm sure I can speak for everyone here when I say that it's truly humbling. To now and forever a love like no other, please raise your glasses to a long, happy, and healthy future for Lauren and Lou. May life give you both all the greatest things you so richly deserve. I love you. I'm clapping. That was beautiful. Yeah. That was beautiful. That's Incredible. the word I wrote big across my paper here. Um, great job. Um, let's get into it. Um, cinematography, Blake, I'm going to st stall for a sec while you put some thoughts together um, on cinematography. Um, but we're looking for camera movement, uh, the technique, the quality, the exposure, the all the... Uh, all the technical sides of things, but then like just the, the movement of the shots, all that kind of stuff. What are you, what are you thinking for cinematography, Blake? Man, I got to go four and a half cinematography for me. I mean, like, and that's just like being the spicy curmudgeon of a professor who says nobody gets an A, right? Like, I don't know what like could have made it better, but like it was genuinely really, really good. Like all the camera movement was inspired. Like it needed to move when it needed to, when it needed to move. Um, there wasn't like any movement that was just for the sake of movement. It felt like, um, it looked like there were some really, really hard scenes that shoot in like that house is like super, super, super bright outside, but a lot of like light colors inside, but you still got a really, 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 um, high class fine art feel, uh, to it. Like, uh, yeah, I, I don't, uh, no notes. I mean, as far as that goes, <laughs> like, uh, I thought it was, um, really, really well composed, really, really well shot. Um, like, yeah, I, I didn't have anything to anything bad to say about any of the cinematography. I thought it was great. Awesome. Lindsay, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, well, for the record, Becca told me on Facebook or she said on Facebook, she hopes she gets annihilated by Lindsay Conklin. Oh, geez. And I was really <laughs> so I was really looking forward to annihilating Becca. But I I can't do it. I can't. She just because she That's annihilated beautiful. this film. Yeah. yeah. I I gave uh, cinematography a, a Guatemala. A Guatemala, the first. It's the first I just Guatemala. <laughs> wow, you Guatemala it. Uh, I, I mean, I thought Jeez. I thought it was great. I thought some of the shots, like the fact that she, uh, like just the bride walking down and having multiple angles of a bride walking down yeah. this hallway or whatever, like is incredible. She got tights and wides and medium shots of everything and. We'll get to this later, but then going into the edit, how she used those together. Like I just, I thought it was really good. So um, no, if, if I were to give it a number, yeah, I would, I'd probably give it a, a four and a half as well. I thought for what it was for the couple, um, I thought it was great. I don't know. Like there's uh, little, little yeah. improvement that I, I would, I would ask for. Yeah. Um, I hated it. I thought it was terrible back then. <laughs> I, I spit on this. No, uh, outside of what these guys are saying, um, I loved the shot of her like coming out during the ceremony, like to walk down the aisle, just how you beautifully used like the gimbal movement and then cut to that different angle and you couldn't see you in the, it's like all that. And then obviously the slow movement throughout, just like with this slow paced song and this beautiful. But, sorry to interrupt that, that toast shot. I, I really liked the toast. That's shot what I was going to say next. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, well, that's sorry. Uh, we'll yeah. I feel, that. I feel like most of, you know, it, it, it challenged me on toasts to like get more creative. I love the little Foley in the front of that shot there, whatever that was, or foliage, not Foley. Right. Um, but like, 
sorry, I'm in audio mode already, but uh, just the angles of the speeches, like shooting through people. And then I just have to say, it looked like the ceremony and like maybe even the like uh, other parts of the day, like mainly the ceremony, it looked like everybody was just kind of standing in an area and you still captured it well. I don't know if they ended mm -hmm. up sitting down. I couldn't really tell, but it's like, that's hard when you're in a confined space like that. I don't know, were there seats? I don't know if I'm seeing seats or everybody just like stood up. I, yeah, I couldn't. There's seats up front, but like, are they over there in the back yeah. part? Like, I don't know. It just seemed and like that would have been a very difficult chore and you yes. nailed it. Yes. People probably would have, other people probably would have stressed out like, oh my gosh, how are we going to film this? What are we going to do? But it, I thought it was done really well. It and feels like you got your solid angles. You got out behind them. Um, I gave it a four and a half as well. I honestly don't know why I'm not giving it a five. Yeah. Um, I think that for me on like uh, things I'm thinking about, like I, are just more of like the mind blowing eye candy movements that, but I don't know how you do that in this. So I don't know. I love yeah. these shots. I love the tights. I love I just so freaking good. Good job. I'm seeing, I'm seeing in the comments, Becca said that, uh, the groom didn't want any like posy portrait type style shots that worked um, in this film though. And yeah. it, exactly. So that, that's the thing is so, so many filmmakers, we all fall back on having the, that portrait session to be like our wow eye candy. Yep. And then the rest is kind of like, oh, it's okay. It's a live event. But the fact that none of this is like staged and yeah, it still it. looks like incredible composition and, and, you know, she just understood where, where to position herself to film everything. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. It's really you, great. Like, I think you knocked it out of the park. I gave it a four and a half as well. Um, great, great job. Um, all right. Moving on to audio and sound design. Lindsay, I'll start with you on this one. Um, what are your thoughts on audio sound design? Yeah. Um, okay. So this is where I thought the audio, the choice of music was really good. It fit the couple. There wasn't really any sound design aspects that I noticed other than maybe the crowd cheering after they get announced. So I would have liked to see more of that. Um, I, but ultimately like the audio was captured extremely well. The music selection was really good. The The song, the first song got a little repetitive after a while. I, I did feel like it, I welcomed the change when, when it kind of transitioned uh, to later in the evening, that song. I, I was happy about that because I was kind of like done with the first song by then. But I mean, ultimately, I gave it a 3.5 just because of the lack of, of any sort of sound design. Glasses clinking, you know, when they're cheersing or any, any little thing that would have like uh, she would have added, would have stepped it up to, I think, a, a four. But yeah. Yeah. I went back and forth on this. Um, I loved uh, just the simplicity and the beauty of these songs, the choices, and just how it kind of just kept this beautiful undertone through the whole thing, nice and soft. We never had to go get hype with it, even though we were mm -hmm. dancing. Like, I just think it the, the film was able to breathe um, with that. The sound bits, I, I, I think that uh, StreamYard uh, through like kind of makes some of the audio dialogue sound a little processed more than it actually is on our end. Um, so I don't I don't fault that. I think it sounded good. Like the quality was good. There was no audio like uh, dialogue that was like, oh, this sounds bad. Anything like that. Right. Um, my, the only only thing I'm thinking is like there were a few shots of like um like the cocktail hour or like things like that, where you could have used some scratch audio or some uh, just, just little noise. Like, and again, I go, I went back and forth between a three and a half and a four on this. And I landed on a four because I think that with what you were trying to accomplish with this film, trying to do too much of that might've taken away from the simplicity and beauty of it. Yeah. So like I ended up like when we saw the pool here, I was like, oh, it would have been nice to maybe just like faintly hear a little water, maybe some birds chirping when we're doing little some of these, you know, shots like this, just little bitty things that are really nitpicky. Um, but overall, I think that very solid. I gave it a four. Mm -hmm. Blake, what's up? Um, so I went three and a half as well. Um, like I can definitely see like the battle that she had in keeping it this like really, really um, like uh tiffany and co commercial type of feel to it and like mm -hmm. but there were just certain spots where i felt it would have added some energy to have some uh some sound design like specifically uh th like this shot right here like 
just at a really low level. I'm talking like barely, yeah. barely audible, but be able to hear like a little bit of that band music going on. Like the, just the shaking helped. of the, yeah, the just, like just a, a this, tiny, like, like the tiniest bit, like not like, like you almost would miss it. But um, I think yeah. some of that would have really put it over the top. Uh, and for me. and, I'll, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you why I also didn't give it a four. The Zoom H1 that was strapped to the microphone during the <laughs> I'm gonna, I was going to talk about that next, <laughs> which it sounded super, super good. Uh, and that was the only thing that kind of took away is there's one part of the toast where the audio uh, and the video are out of sync, just like a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. And it made me want to ask, and Becca, if you can drop it in the comments, did you have one of the people ADR? Like, did they re-record uh, one of their things later? But uh, And it could have just been, you know, in the... It could be a Vidflow thing or something, but um, there was one where it was just like the, his mouth was moving just like a, a few frames. And this is like super nitpicky, but a few frames. It was this one right here. People are going to impact your life. Watch it. Lawrence, you were the true definition of a friend. Mm. You're one of the most selfless it's, people. It's hard for me with the stream. Two, it's like two frames. I'm sorry. I should. I wonder, I wonder <laughs> if she used uh, Adobe podcast AI um, enhancement. That's what it Could sounds be. like to me. And I've noticed, I've noticed when you use that, she's, you saying, she's saying that she didn't, she, it might, it might've messed it up with sync. She might've messed it up with sync. Yeah. I, I also rescind my comment. It was like maybe two frames out. Oh, she the, did. Uh, she did use oh. Adobe. Ah, uh, okay. okay. Yeah. The Adobe thing, it's super, super awesome, but there's certain things it just does not know how to handle. Um, like people laughing and cheering. It, right. It does not know what to do with that. Like it just, um, it freaks out. Yeah, some of those moments and it will completely change words uh, yeah i, I noticed that, that it it changed a little bit of what the efficient said when he was announcing when he yeah. said man and wife it, it was like yeah. and wife yeah uh that's what it was yeah, a, for sure adobe adobe will do that what i like to do if i if i have to use the adobe ai i'll actually run it through a dialogue isolator to yes. just pull out the dialogue and get rid of the background noise any clapping laughing then run it through adobe ai and then eq it and and i'll even add like reverb and you really got to eq it to make it sound more natural and not like it's mm -hmm. in a studio yep but that was super nitpicky of, of that i mean that was but i mean it was I thought the audio sounded <sighs> i'm great. sticking with i'm sticking with my four i think you did a great job becca i'm not a jerk like these two <laughs> no i said she wanted uh, some harsh criticism. she wanted to be annihilated I'm trying and so i'm like <laughs> saying it's two frames out of sync like, we're well, trying to next. annihilate her you're next, Blake, on editing. Moving um, forward on the edit itself. Blake, the editor. Uh, yeah, I I loved the edit. Um, like you could definitely feel the the style that you're going for, like in the shot lengths, like how long each shot stays on screen, um, like the way that you're you were cutting back and forth. I thought was really, really, really good. Um, this could just be the ADHD in me. I, like I felt like it could have been a minute shorter to me. Um, like, I, I don't think I would have lost anything on that. I can't tell you what I would have cut out. Like, so, I mean, that's probably not, not great criticism, but, um, I thought it was, you know, obviously well, well, well above industry standard. Um, so, um, I actually went four and a half on the edit. Like I just like couldn't find anything that I was like, wow, this was really, really bad. Like it wasn't a complicated edit. Like you didn't do like crazy fast cuts or anything like that. Uh, it was just, just tremendously solid, um, on, on really matching the tone and the way the vibe that you were going for with this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do yeah, you got, it's, a, it's a classic, elegant couple and the edit reflected that. Um, yeah. I thought it was, I thought it was incredible. Um, I was just trying to think of like one thing <laughs> that I would have liked to see at the second song because, you know, it's not like hyped up, right. It does feel more like, like right here, you know, they're doing the, uh the chairlift the um what's it called oh no i filmed so many of these canceled anyway you just got uh, canceled yeah i did so the uh i would the have horror. liked to see that the horror thank you yep. i would have liked to see that in <laughs> i just came to me too i couldn't remember what it was <laughs> i'm like hamotzi no that's the bread uh yeah huppa no that's the altar yeah. uh so the um that moment, like just with the music, I would have liked to see in slow motion. I don't know why. Like it just felt more nostalgic. Like the music was like things were happening in the past and just classic and um, not everything in slow motion. But but just like that moment, it was just like I would have liked to see in, in slow motion. But I, I love how she incorporated, again, multiple focal lengths into the edit. You know, when she showed 
the band on the balcony, like she showed a wide shot and then it cuts into a tight shot of that same, same band instead of moving on. It just, those types of things, when you do that, you know, shows you're being intentional. It's much more pleasing as, as a viewer to, to watch. Um, yeah, I gave, I gave, I think she nailed it. I think mission accomplished. So I, I gave that also a four and a half out of Guatemala. Wow. Wow. So, well, I'm, I'm the last one here uh, on this one and I gave it a four, not because I, I, I am the bad guy, I guess. So on this one, I think it was great. I, with what Blake said, like there was one part, like two thirds of the way through where like, I just kind of, I kind of, my mind drifted a little bit and I was yeah. like, Oh yeah. Like there was just something somewhere in there that I don't know what it is, but it didn't like push it. Like, I think it was just a minute. It dragged. Too long. Yeah, yeah. It, it did. Little- it did drag. With the song being slow, I mean, for them, I, I mean, this is the edit you should have made. I'm not saying that uh, that even needs to be changed. So, like, that's where I've been, was been going back and forth. I mean, a four is far above uh, standard. I think you did such a good job with your wide, medium tights, your uh, just the way this, that, that you let the story unfold, which is obviously in the story portion of this. But um, the edit was so very good. I have really no major critiques at all except for, uh, like, something about it felt a little bit draggy there so i'm i'm sticking with the four on that one all right moving on to story um who wants to volunteer to go first on story i will i thought it was i thought it was totally solid i loved it i thought um you know when he in the beginning right from the beginning he's talking about all the the family and the friends that are there and she's cutting the shots of of you know family and friends like i i think i know that's a super simple thing but like it helps you know reinforce a story that that you're telling um and there was other examples of that uh you know that i I really appreciated um was it you know this mind-blowing story you know per se not necessarily but again it fit the couple it felt just Mm -hmm. classic and they and elegant and romantic and i thought that came through really nicely so yeah, I gave it a I gave it a four. Likewise, I I don't have any real major feedback outside of what you just said, even, and I'm just for sake of time, I gave this a four as well. I think that to be a five, it's uh, to me as a person that really really digs into story. Um, sometimes the couple that you have will only allow you, in my mind, to get to a four. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they they seem like they wanted the privacy. They wanted, uh, you know, they weren't trying. They didn't want to do a bunch of portraits. They're a little older, like like which is great. Um, they're not. You're trying to you know create an Instagram video. They wanted something beautiful to show off for their for their family and their heirloom. Um, so I give it a four. I think the only thing is to like up it a little bit more is like I. Uh, like would be more footage or things from other days besides the day almost like their story itself if they but i don't think they would have been willing to give you any of that like the whole australia side of stuff uh like i got it but i also didn't like see it at the same time and see that unfold i didn't see any footage or anything of them as that story progressed i don't think this film needed it so I think this is as good as you could have made it, uh, mm-hmm. which which would be the four the four on this one for me. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't have a whole lot to add to that. I, w- I went four also, um, and that was just purely not your fault. Like, there's just they seem like a very private couple. Just didn't give you a whole lot to tell that story. Um, that was one of the notes I wrote. Was like, if I if you could have had like a day before session or something with them, um, that would have been really really cool. But um, yeah, nothing that I think you could have done to tell the story any better than this. Great. All right, uh, so fours across the board on that. Mm-hmm. All right, last but not least, color. Uh, Blake, where are you where are you at on color on this one? So I gave this a four and a half. Again, just being spicy curmudgeon, can't give it a five for some reason. Um, I thought it was great. I, I, I think it fit. Like There were certain parts where I was like, oh, I don't know that I like the color on that, but it fit the overall vibe of this film. Um, and in in these spots where I felt like, you know, it, it didn't match, um, it, it felt like it was very, very environmental. Like, I don't know how I would have color balanced or color graded for that house that they were in. It's like, everything's yellow, the, the backyards, you know, a thousand degrees. (laughs) Like it was really hard to, to shoot for, but, um, that's where I landed like these, I I thought it was, I thought it was really well colored. Mm -hmm. What about you, Lindsay? Yeah. I don't know how, like 
how it would get any better. I think this is the color that a lot of people <laughs> try to achieve, but do so unsuccessfully. Yep. Um, I love the look, you know, it, um, it, I thought it was super consistent and I'm trying, I'm sitting here thinking like, how could it get better? <laughs> and I can't, I can't think of how it would get better. And I, so I, I gave it a Guatemala. Quat the Guat again. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, no, I give it. I give it a five. Actually, yeah, uh, I did. I also gave it a five, and I was. I, I uh, to me, it's so. Like I said this earlier, like this isn't the style that I edit in. Um, so like naturally, I'm like, well, I don't like that as much necessary for me or whatever. Um, but like, I think it's beautiful. It played really well with the tone of the film. I think that in the dark, you know, like these shots, the colors beautiful, um, like everything was smooth, everything matched everything. Uh, you know, it had like almost, uh, like that Ozark overlay to it, that green hue to it. That was, uh, I know it's not an Ozark type film, but I don't know. It's just like, it was very intentional. It mm -hmm. stayed that throughout. It set the tone for the film. It was very, um, on purpose. And it, it just kept me in this like beautiful romantic thing that you, you know you created so i gave it a five i think it was i think it was flawless i i don't know where i would have changed it um especially uh looking through these clips and stuff now i think you did a really good job with what you had especially for a live event so wow wow becca i'm changing mine i'm going to five on color i had no reason to give you four and a half Blake the whole time the i was there looking and i was like um, why did i not give it a five yeah so I have a four and a half, a four, a four, a four, and a five. So 21 and a half for I me. A I had a 21. And Lindsay's low score was a 3.5 on the audio, I think yeah. so. Is, yeah, you want to so, change that? Are you good? No, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with 3.5. So I, I say, uh, let's see, that's eight, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, I think I gave it total. So no. What did I miss? Oh, I missed editing. Yeah, I gave it missed. a four on editing, so I gave it uh, twenty one. Yeah, so as well. so that's a sixty three point five. Is that right? Twenty forty sixty three point five, which is really close to that sixty seven point five is the top uh, award. So she gets the is it the honorable distinction award, Blake? The one that's right before that. Um, so you, yeah, great job, incredible. If you don't follow Becca on Instagram uh follow her work she's been on our podcast before super cool human i uh, love her and she's amazing so good job becca wow good job all right how many more of these do we have on the list blake we got about 25 minutes left in the live stream for today however many more you guys at least get to at least get to one more um right, let's do one more Yep, let's do it. Are you guys in the comments doing okay over there? Are you guys liking this? Are we sucking at our jobs? Are we professionals? Uh, any feedback for us? Uh, let us know in the comments. Um, cool. All right, I'm ready to go, Becca. Yeah, good job. Blake, are you ready? All right, so this one? next film <laughs> is by Alex Gonzalez. He glitched. He glitched <laughs> for a second. Yeah, totally glitched. Um, so this next one was by Alex Gonzalez, and right under five minutes. Let's do it. Cool. <laughs> My dear future husband. You are the love of my life. Today starts the greatest journey of our lives. My partner is scary movies and my best friend. 
God's timing is perfect. Whether I'm happy, sad, or sick, you have always been there for me. And I'm so blessed to call you my forever. I use the fact that I was a history teacher to get a date with you at a museum. I promise to help you with your homework and teach you about some of the exhibits. But honestly, I was making some of those things up. You have molded me to be a better person each and every day with your patience, with your love, but most of all, with your respect. God knows exactly what I needed and when I needed it. I need you, Jeremy, and I promise I'll always be here for you. I pray for a man of praise, ambition, stress, and loyalty. I promise to always love you and always be by your side until my dying breath. I promise to travel the world with you and make your dreams come true. I literally dreamt about this day since I was very young. This marriage is my calling and I will always answer every time. I promise to be your security blanket and keep you safe and warm. You know, I will always have your back no matter the circumstances. Today and forever, I give you my heart, my soul, my trust, no matter what the future might bring. I love you to infinity and beyond. All right. Good job. All right. Very cool. um, that was fun. Uh, all right, let's get to it. Uh, let's start with uh, let's start with the cinematography side of things. As a reminder, uh, just looking at skill, we're looking at camera movement, we're looking at creativity. Um, I, I can start out on this one. Um, I, I'm going to give this one a four. I think you did a really good job um, on this of of creating. Uh, like the that shot of the chessboard was super cool. The angles mm -hmm. you've got your uh, your exposure's good, and most of all this, you're using the gimbal. You're mixing that in really nice with natural light and all these beautiful backdrops and different things like that. I think you, I think you took this to the next level. This was awesome. I love all this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's completely different from my style, which is fun to watch. Um, but I think you did a great job. Your drone shots, the uh, all this stuff, really good on 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 my end. So I'm giving it a four. Uh, Blake, what you got? Um, I had to go exactly the same. Um, I know black magic footage when I see it. And so this is definitely a black magic, uh, film, which some of these shots that are really, really, really telling and how much work you put into it, which we'll talk about that in the color. But 
Um, uh, if you're in here, Alex, if you'll let us know what you shout this on, but um, I thought it was really, really great. Uh, I thought the it felt like maybe you were limited in space uh, sometimes because it just kind of felt like a, a repeat of a lot of the same shots. But we'll talk about it in the edit um, part of it. But um, for what sounds you had, like we're like, talking about the edit right now. Yeah, well, yeah, but it was just kidding. Super, super solid. Uh, but yeah, I had to go four as well. Like really, really, really good. So like I really couldn't take anything out of it. Like the drone shots were were really, really, really good. Um, yeah, like, it's really yeah. good. What you got, Lindsay? Uh, I gave it a four as well. That's this Copier. many. Um, the because again, creativity. Yeah, I really liked it. Um, two. I only have. I agree with everything that you guys said. I only have one, one or two uh, points. Some of the gimbal movements you had like that kind of up and down, like the walk. So I would, yeah. I would practice your gimbal walk a little bit to kind of get rid of that. Um, and then I. Look, I'm giving him a four, John. What I got? I'm just, I'm just making it. I'm making a note for a future <laughs> Instagram reel, on the gimbal yeah. walk. <laughs> uh, and then I can't tell if it's because of of the streaming and it's kind of just like glitchy. But like some of the time lapse stuff, um, I would have liked a little bit more motion blur in the time lapse, like with people walking around. So set setting a longer exposure to get that that cool motion blur with the people moving around. I think looks more pleasing and more cinematic than. The, 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 you know, anyway, other than yeah. that, it's great. I think I, I default to thinking that it's done well because I know that the stream is a little bit choppy when it comes to some of this stuff. So that would have been a critique of mine as well. Um, okay, moving on to audio. Um, before we're getting into it, I feel like the boom mic guy during the ceremony had his job cut out. I don't know, you saw him several times. That was funny. I was, I was appreciative of him for the good audio um during the ceremony but I, before i get into it uh, i'll start back with you Lindsay. what are your thoughts on audio uh three and a half i thought it was everything sounded great i thought it was mixed pretty good um again it's hard to tell with the streaming software um yep. but everything that we heard uh I, I felt like it sounded pretty good this right here the the groom's vow i don't know if it was the streaming software where it kind of sounded inconsistent like one time it sounded really good and another time it sounded a little bit more yeah. reverby and echoey and or maybe that was just an issue they're having uh, on the actual day but i those are things that could have easily been fixed you know using all the tools and software we have now mm -hmm. um there was no real sound design which would have i think again stepped it up a little bit more but i thought it was above average what what we were heard and what we we're listening to was above average but could have been slightly better yeah. Um, I also gave it a 3.5. I do feel like there were some like booms and some like some pads that were added, some sound effects that weren't necessarily like natural sound effects, but they were within the vibe of this like cinematic strings, uh, luxurious LED wall, ton of money spent on this event. Um, so yeah, I feel like it was very solid above average for sure. I gave it a 3.5 as well. What do you, what do you have Blake? Uh, so I went three um, on this one. Like I thought it was just super, super solid. Like there wasn't anything that really detracted from it, but there wasn't really anything that just like added a ton, uh, like especially with some really, really cool time lapses and some really, really cool transitions. Uh, it was just kind of like begging for some really, really, really well done um, transition sounds and sound effects and, um, you know, some like time stretching, there's different things that you, you really could have added and took it to like a really, really high level. So like absent of those things, it just felt uh, like it was just really solid industry standard. So I went three on that one. I need to throw it out there. I just looked over in the comments. That was Blake's dog that barked. Uh, <laughs> and that was not in the wedding film. Not in the uh, film. Also, Alex says 85% of the footage was black magic. Good job, Blake, capturing or yep. catching that. Uh, next up is editing. Uh, I'll start with you, Lindsay, on the edit. Um what do, what do you got on this one? Yeah, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a four, and I'll tell you why. I know this bride, and I guarantee she loved her video. Uh, she just she loves the drama. She loves the hype. She loves the you know the larger than life editing. You know the even just the touches with like starring. You know the bride and the groom and their names. Like I just I guarantee you, I know this client loved that film. And and again, ultimately, what do we? Here to do we're not supposed to be trying to impress each other we're, we need to be serving our clients and i i, I think alex 
nailed the assignment for his client. So I, I give it a did four. You say, really did good. you say you know the bride or you know the bride loved the film? I said both of those okay. things. Okay. You know this bride? Yeah. No, I don't know her personally, but That's I know it. I get what you say. I know I know her what she wanted. I, get it. I know okay. her type, you know, and I and and I, I can tell that she really yes. loved the drama and yes. you know some of the over over the top um editing that that Alex threw into this. And so again, he yeah, he nailed it. He nailed the assignment. Great job. Good job. Blake, what do you got on this? Blake the editor. Uh so I went four on the edit. Um like I honestly wanted to give you a five. Like you're a, a really, really, really good editor. Um, like it's really, really, really good. Did somebody say this is your first? Yeah, film? I'm just I'm reading that right now. He like, says it's his first the edit, film. The, the edit is is really, really, really good. I, I had quit. like I had Goodbye. one major detractor, and it, it he said it a second ago. The couple probably loved it, but like when it said the bride, like with her name on it, like that felt like putting ketchup on a steak to me. Like it just, like, <laughs> this was like really, really good. But I know that the bride. I, loved I'm not a that. fan. I'm not a fan of that either. But I guarantee you, this couple. But loved you're that. you're right. You're right. That was the only thing uh, that that took it from uh, down for me. But like some of the stuff that you did, like really elevated the shooting. Like you way out edited a lot of your shooting, like in a good way. Like there were some shots that you just made over the top because of the way that you edit them as opposed to what would have been just like a middle of the road um, kind of shot. So major, major, major kudos uh, on that. So I went four um, on the edit. Uh, I'm the last one to go on the edit. I gave it a four and a half. I think this is, was really well done. I, again, not my style, the starting, starring the groom. I think you went, you went for it on this style of film and I think you nailed it. I think, that there's little to be done to make it better. Um, there was a couple of like shot choices or like uh, things that were in the, like I'm a nitpicky guy. If there's like someone walking around in the background, it feels unintentional or it just, again, it's a live event. And so, um, but I think that you did such a good job of mix, mixing the different kinds of shots. I never got bored. I feel like this edit, I, I, I have a hard time believing this is your first film. Um, Maybe first wedding film. It's his first wedding. First wedding film is what okay. He's okay. A cinematographer and a DP, and this was his okay. first time shooting. That tracks. I, I feel like he's uh, one of the new members of our mastermind group as well. So I'm um, yes. excited to pick his brain more. Okay, cool, cool. Um, yeah, you you nailed it. Uh, Four point five for me on that one. Um, story, Blake. I'm gonna have you go first on this one. What you got? Um, this was the only like real. Um, Jake said he liked that I said detractor earlier. So I'm going to say that again. This is the only mm. real detractor for me. Uh, it felt like, you know, they definitely put some money into the event and they wanted to show that off. And you did a really, really good job um, at doing that. And you like, you conveyed the personality of who the couple is. Uh, it came across like in spades in this film, um, I felt like. But it's just like, uh, again, it's just like that. It's hard to say that I didn't like really feel anything. It didn't feel invested in it. Um, but it was, uh, I thought it was super solid, super industry standard. So I went three and a half story. Cool. Yeah. I think the, uh, the real protractor in my mind. Protractor. Was, is it, was it, what'd you say? Protractor? Detractor. Oh, I detractor. That's oh, right. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say protractor. I get it. And I haven't even thought of the word protractor in so long. <laughs> it's been 30 years. It, ta yeah. it takes you back to like elementary school, doesn't it? Well, for um, me, it was high school. I was a little behind. So yeah. Hmm. Well, we can't, you know, just kidding. I was very ahead in math. Sorry. Continue. No, I think, um, yeah. Story for me was th a three, you know, I think it was solid. It was, um, I think the story was in the edit or yeah. like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like the, the hype, the hype editing and the, the dr dramatic editing, that was the story. Um, but as far as like an actual story, you know, uh, of uh you know using the audio pieces and and the the video elements to like tell a story it wasn't really like anything uh there you know substantially so i, I gave it a three i agree 100 percent. i wrote down three as well for story i think that the story was the edit i think you nailed the edit and i don't think you really could have done much differently with this story and I think that's what you had to work with. I don't think right. they would have been a couple that wanted anything else more than this. I can't imagine them not giving you a thousand percent out of a thousand percent for what you did. So uh, great job. Last up is color. Uh, Lindsay, why don't you start the color? Yeah, I gave color a three and a half. 
Um, I thought it was really great, but I also, there were some in, inconsistencies, um, not only from location to location, which I know you're going to have uh, some of that, which I'm okay with, but even like in the same room, I thought I, I could tell there was like certain shots that, that didn't match uh, the same room, but a different angle or camera. So I, but I still thought it like it had a look to it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it had a, it had a specific look to it that, um, that was really, really kind of cool and vibey and dramatic and at some points, but uh, could have been more consistent. So I, I went with 3.5. Blake. Um, so for color on this one, um, it's hard to be impartial on this cause I've been on black magic and like, I see some of the images you pull out of that and know how much work it went in to get the balance that you did on some of them. So I wanted to skew a lot higher, uh, but kind of to echo some of Lindsay's stuff, but there were just a lot of inconsistencies in it. Uh, and a lot of it may have come in just an exposure and some of the way that it was shot, uh, where it just felt like the color changed because some things were like pretty drastically underexposed in a lot of situations um, and then maybe overexposed in a few others and then some grain issues and things like that that really, really took me out of it. Um, but, uh, I actually went, uh, three and a half on color as well. Um, like I had four written down for a good chunk of the film. And then I think it probably just started to happen more in the reception area where it just started to see a lot of green and the image kind of start to fall apart on some of those. But I mean, I, I thought it was still well above industry average, like, especially yeah. given this Senate, this scenario and, and the, the settings that you had there, I thought it was really good. Yeah. The only add-ons I have to any of that is I feel like the color on the drone footage was ridiculously good i feel yeah. like um you did a really good job i had four written down until we got to the reception footage and i just saw Same. some of that color some of that color go away so i i wrote 3.5 as well overall though alex first wedding film obviously you've got some skills a dp um but before this but wow um great job all right so i had a four a three and a half four and a half three and a three and a half so uh four eight twelve 16.5 for me um what do you guys have i think mine's 18 i get 18 as well let me double check that i did mine right four seven and a half and two, 11 and a half i had an 18 i don't know what <laughs> no let me do some math real quick seven and a half 12 this is riveting yeah. i'm at 18.5 not 16.5 so that i was makes, that makes sense Hey, I know that this is your this is your nightmare for us to be sitting here doing math on the air. <laughs> Lindsay was really worried about that. I get it. Um, so eighteen times three is what, guys? Fifty-four. Uh, maybe you got a fifty-four point five. So can you calculate it with a protractor? Yeah, let me get my protractor out. That would be um, above the the line there at the fifty-one to be an honorable mention. So great job. Well on done. Your film. Well done. I mean, that on your first wedding film, you got big things happening. You're gonna, you're in the mastermind group. You're gonna keep learning and doing stuff. Um, wow. Um, it's three fifty six my time. Uh, I've got room for one more. I know Lindsay sent us a message about watching one more. I'm good to end it for the day. Uh, where, are you, where are you guys at? You guys need to go to the uh, to the bathroom. You good? You feel uh, feel like you could do one more? Or are you good for the day? It's not gonna hurt my feelings. It's up to Blake. He's the one I'm that's down. gonna press play. <laughs> I'm down. You guys are gonna right. regret when I tell you that this is a nine minute film. Is it really? <laughs> it is a nine minute film. All right, you guys talk for a sec. You guys ready to buckle up? <laughs> <laughs> you have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I love it. I love it. We're doing it live. Hey, Alex, thanks so much, man. Uh, you saw yeah. that you in the comments. You said you added some grain, um, but yeah, it just probably just a knee jerk reaction to being in the wedding industry when it gets dark and you start to see that it feels like noise. So, um, but I thought it was. Now that really John, weird. now that John's gone, this is when I get to plug all my my products, right? Yes, my hair please. gel, my uh, hair gel affiliate, Lutz. Links, my oh yeah, oh real products. Oh, right. <laughs> real products. I was going to uh, talk about my fake products, like my fake hair gel uh, sponsorship, but and your Instagram it, subscription stuff. That's right. Yeah. So if you're watching, be sure to uh, follow us on Instagram if you don't already. We're Larev Films, L E R E V E films yeah. and subscribe we have a really cool uh subscription um where we do behind the scenes and tutorials and we even uh send our subscribers leads and referrals we've had a couple people book uh ten thousand dollar plus weddings 
from our our leads that we get. Not bad for five bucks. Oh, he's back. Shoot. <laughs> I'm Dang one it. of the subscribers to That's I true, you guys are. in my ears when I was oh, no. using the restroom. Uh the that which was a weird experience. Mm -hmm. Um but yes, I'm one of his subscribers and uh, he does post big leads in there, which is well worth the five big bucks leads. a month. Yes. Big yeah. leads. All right. I could go for another two hours, guys. I feel like a million bucks. <laughs> I don't have another two hours in me. I'm just uh, kidding. But all I right, do last have, film of the day. Let's do it. I do have another um, nine minutes and four seconds. Just we can kidding. do it. Plus the time it takes us to review it. Yeah. Let's go. Pretty. I think like the day after time met Mike, she came over to our house and was going on and on and on and on and on and on and on about him. And I was like, me, like Joe, like you met him like a couple days ago and you're acting like you're gonna get married. And she just looked at me like this over her shoulder. And I was like, wait, what? And she was like, yeah, I mean, eventually he's the one. Mm. Well done. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> Tyler and Mike met at one of Boston's finest establishments, the Harp, while they're both out with their own groups of friends. They both caught each other's eye from across the bar, and Mike eventually made his move when Tyler ordered herself a drink at the bar. No, he didn't offer to buy her a drink. <laughs> but instead, he panicked and waited until she signed her tab. And to finally strike up a conversation, he told her that he liked her signature. <laughs> this may seem like such a small moment, and it easily could have been. But it sparked a conversation that lasted the whole night, and their connection was immediate. And after that, they both quickly found themselves falling in love. That small moment at the harp and the many more small but significant moments to come have built the foundation of the beautiful relationship that they have today. I love her so much. She's the best. friend, the love of my life, my everything. You make me feel like the luckiest and the happiest man in the world. I've always been a very private person, guarded, quiet, like there were walls all around me. The second I met you, you changed everything. You didn't just lower those walls, you tore them down and you gave me the confidence to be my full self, a person I didn't even know until I met you. I cannot imagine my life without you, and I fall more in love with you every single day. Michael, words could truly never describe how much I love you or how excited I am to be in this moment with you right now. I've thought about standing here, holding your hand, which we're not doing, <laughs> and promising to love you for the rest of my life, more times than I can count. 
I hope you always know how much I love the man that you are and the man that you'll be a year from now, 10 years from now, and seven years from now. Michael, you are truly the best person I've ever known. It is now with the authority vested in me by the state of Rhode Island, I now pronounce you husband and wife. I'm so happy to be able to call you my husband today and to become your wife. Thank you for showing me that some things do last forever after all. Tyler, I love you more than anything in this world, especially more than yesterday. When Tyler first met Mike, I had the pleasure of driving her to the train every morning and picking her up every night. And I'd say, Ty, how was your day? And she'd say, oh, it was good. And she'd tell me a little story about work. And then I'd say, how's Mike? And she'd say, he's great. <laughs> Sometime later, they met with Kelsey in the city and they all had dinner. So I called Kelsey the next day and she said, oh, Ma, he's so nice. He's so handsome. And he treats Tyler like a queen. Mom, he's great. And I was like, all right, maybe this guy's great. Then we met Mike, I think it was Thanksgiving, right? The first time we met Mike. And I realized for myself, he is great. I miss having you guys around the house. You guys were like, always there to talk and everything all the bicker and banter that we would have and everything completely miss it and it was cool too you see your relationship growing and everything i mean every time you guys saw each other you just you get all giddy so you know when you leave a dog in a room and you come back five minutes later the dog starts wagging its tail that's what these do are The point is, Mike is incredibly kind and incredibly fun. I know Mike immediately loved Ty's friends and family because of his love for her, but I think I speak for all of us when I say his desire to make genuine connections with everyone has been obvious from the start. I couldn't have handpicked a better person for my sister, and I'm so excited that you're my brother now. always thought, you know what, Mike can just be Mr. Grump sometimes, and I accept that. But Tyler, I can honestly say something changed when I met you. I have never seen somebody make Mike as genuinely happy as you do. Seriously, even something as simple as cooking a Hello Fresh meal together, Mike is just happy to do it with you. I know Mike is not happy because he loves cooking, he is happy because he's with you. And that's what brings us here tonight. So cheers to Mike and Tyler. Let us pray for the dance floor tonight because we're going to rip it. Let's go! You truly are two of my favorite people in the world. Your personalities could not be more complimentary. You bring out the best in one another, which is such a great testament to your love. So let's raise a glass to Ty and Mike. I wish you all the joy in the world, and that's showbiz, baby. Congratulations. All right, all right, all right. Good job. Good job, Kyle. Good job, Kyle. Um, good, good film. Good film. Um, mm -hmm. let's just get right into it. Cinematography. Um, Blake, what do you got? Uh, I went 3.5 on this one. Um, I thought it was well above industry. Um, like I feel like I can pinpoint where this is. Um, like I, like, I don't know Kyle, where you are, what your market is, but I feel like you are like 
mid top of your market, like making some really, really good money on these films. I don't know what you charge for this, but like some really, really good couples, really, really good events. Um, and I thought it was like super, super solid and, and well above, you know, like what you would see in the, in the normal industry. Um, just the camera movement I thought was really, really good. I didn't see any shots that like, I felt really pulled me out of it. Um, as far as cinematography went, uh, like this was really, really cool. Incorporating some of their footage was great. Um, yeah, I thought it was really, really good. Yeah. I, I thought this was good too. I gave it actually a four and a half, um, in my opinion. And I gave it a little bit of extra credit for a couple reasons. The toe shots really like your toe shots you, you have control over. That's the one, one of the few things, you know, on a wedding or a live event that we have control over. So like doing anything that shows that you've thought about it, where your mm -hmm. camera placement was going to be. He had multiple camera angles, love, you know, using like that per the lower angle, using like someone's shoulder to kind of, you know, dirty the frame a little bit. I thought was really, really uh, pleasing. Everything was solid. I, I was looking at, I'm like, how would I make most of these shots better? And I, I had trouble finding things to say about it. So I gave it a four and a half. Love, love that feedback. I gave it a four. Um, so I'm kind of split between the two of you guys. Um, I, I think you did a, a really good job uh, when it comes to your composition. I did like the speech, like the, how you muddied up the, you know, the, the frame just with their shoulders. I like the wide, medium tights. I like the, uh, just the skill level that you put into it. You had a good mixture of aerial footage uh, with like just different angles like that shot out the window uh, the movement in the camera i think you did a really good job just kind of like setting that tone with the story good job i give it a four um audio um i gave i'll do this one first i gave it a three the audio i felt like it was solid um it could have been some of the um artifacts i was hearing because my my i what are these called airpods yeah airpods um the, but there was a couple of th things that really stood out to me that like kept it kind of standard. Um, the vows themselves felt like they could just use some EQing. They feel like they were just a little bit like raw almost, or I don't, they just, it felt like they, you didn't beef up the, the low ends or anything like that. Uh, the, the efficient, like you're talking into this mic, this, it seems like it should have been a much more rich audio in those things. Uh, the, spe the speeches were fine. Um, there was also like some letters or something red that were uh, not on screen, but we could hear their voices in the background. That audio to me also felt like it could have used some EQing and some work. Um, then the song choice itself after a while felt pretty repetitive um, and a little tracky kind of just, commercial audio track from maybe a cheaper licensing site or something just kind of looping and it didn't feel like the music like really pushed the film in certain spots that was like really upbeat and happy during the vows when it could have like been brought down and then uh, you could have could it worked in audio a little bit more there were some good sound effects or some so I think it was solid I gave it a three uh, Lindsay where are you at on this yeah I gave it a three, two, I, and I have nothing more to add than what you already said. Okay. <laughs> Great. I nailed it. No, I, I, went, think that's I went three as well. It felt just like uh, industry standard on that. Didn't, um, I couldn't say anything bad about it. I thought it was all, it was all really, really good, but there wasn't anything that just kind of like took over the top. I felt like it could have a little more SFX, like a little more um, sound design, but yeah, that was good. Blake, the editor, why don't you uh, hit us up with your thoughts on the edit itself? So the edit, I really, really liked, uh, like there are some really cool moments like when they, and this might go into color, but where they, when the bride's walking down the aisle and it fades from black and white into color, I thought those were some really cool, uh, things that he did. Uh, that being said, it lost me a, when it had about a minute and a half left to go. Like if you're watching the live stream, you probably saw me go over there and see how much longer there was left on the film. Uh, I don't know if you're contractually obligated to go nine minutes on this, That's but that's what I think was happening. I think yeah, it he must was trying have to been, fill, uh, fulfill yeah. the contract. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, because it just like, it felt like you went back to that shot of the couple kissing with the sun right behind them, which love that shot. Uh, it's one of my favorites, um, but it, but it was it, used a lot. Yeah. It been back in that well a couple of times. It felt like maybe to stretch it out a little bit. Um, but I mean, it's a great edit. I, I couldn't tear anything down, but it felt like you maybe had to stretch it a little bit longer to hit that length on it. Yeah. Yeah, that Did was my have, 
Oh, sorry, that did was you have my, a number, Blake? Three and a half. Your number? Three and a half. I gave it a three and a half. Like I, I think it's definitely above yeah. what most people yeah. are doing, but um, you know, I think yeah. it just kind of felt like it went a little bit long, but you know, nothing that was like yeah. game changer or anything like that. Sorry, Lindsay. It was I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, I, I was inter- I was interrupting. Um yeah, I felt I felt very similar. I was like, this seems like he was contract contractually obligated to fulfill a certain time length. And so there were certain moments that were stretched out way too long. Um, that moment of their first look, which was oh. awesome. It was beautiful. Like I love, I loved it. You let it sit for a little bit, but then it almost like went Moved past too long. Like oh, yeah, yeah. it overstayed its welcome. It overstayed. Exactly. <laughs> like, and I was, I was watching like John and Blake's face and I could see like, we all kind of at the same moment, all were like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now at the end, there was like a really sweet moment where it was like, hi, how was your day? Like, I like that. So cutting out that kind of like the last, like, you know, third of that and, and just including that moment and then moving on would have been better. But again, I think that was a, a an editing choice he was forced to make because he's trying to lengthen out the film, you know, mm-hmm. he, showing every single person walking down the aisle and every single person walking in, into the reception. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just, it was boring. And, and, and you use those moments when they weren't really necessary. Like the mom is doing her speech and this is kind of getting a little bit into the story, but the mom is doing her speech and saying these really sweet things about the couple and their chemistry and stuff, but it's showing people walking into the reception. And, all, all, and it was just <laughs> like, I was like, uh, you know, so yeah, that's why I, I gave it a 3.5 for some of those reasons. There was moments that were really good, but others that were not so great, but it still was better than I thought industry standard. Um, I don't like the Super 8 overlay. I don't know why it was in there. So I would have gotten rid of that. Um, yeah. Cutting out cutting out some of the dialogue um, that was unnecessary to make people sound a little bit more, um, make them sound less wordy, make them sound a little bit, you know, less see I, I can you edit my dialogue please i, yes, I don't know what i'm yes. saying right now <laughs> but I yeah like, i saying. felt like i felt like you just used too much too much audio of certain people's speeches yeah but again i think you had to because you had to yeah. hit that nine minutes exactly i think if this film was six minutes long it would have been perfect um yep. but yeah on the edit as well for me the question i'm asking on the edit as well as the color um a lot is just uh, why, uh, why did you make that decision, uh, in certain spots? Not like, why do you exist? But like, why, (laughs) why is there super white here? Why is this black and white right here at this time? Why is the music, this music at this time and and the intentionality behind some of these choices seems like, oh, that's what I just thought would be cool or something as Mm -hmm. opposed to like, this helps push the, the, the film with what it should be or needs to be. Uh, why is every single person coming into the reception? Why is it in a lot of it is the length of the film. Um, but your edit to me, 3.5 better than your, your standard. You did some fun stuff in there. Um, we can move on to story. Um, and I, I think you did a really good job with the story. Again, I think your numbers would be a lot higher on all of these. If the film was six minutes long, seven, six and a half minutes long. Yeah. Um, I gave this a 3.5 as well. Um, and I think you did a good job of like incorporating their story and telling that story. And um, you did a good job. It just, uh, one of the things I was thinking about is like the way the edit and story kind of go together. That first look, if you wanted to include that whole moment, you could have really used that story of that first look instead of just saying, here it is in its entirety. What have you opened the film with like, him walking up or hearing his audio and it's like, sh- or she's walking up. I'm sorry. He's there and saying, Oh my gosh. And then like, she's walking up and you don't see them do the first look. And then it cuts to them getting ready. And then it builds towards that. Um, mm-hmm. You're seeing all the home footage in the story and hearing about their, uh, you know, the signature or the, th- like all the stuff that went into that story. Um, in those moments, you can lengthen out the film without it losing that, that oomph the zhuzh if if you do that and then you can cut back to that first look and then you can go away and then you can cut back again to the uh the end of that first look or whatever so just kind of playing with that side of the story could have brought it um up for me but i think you did a a really good job of of telling that story three and a half for me next 
I went three and a half also. Um, like I was, you got a really, really great reaction um, out of the groom as, as like, I wanted that moment to just build, like just build up and just crescendo at that. Instead, it kind of felt spaced out uh, a lot more than it should have as far as story goes. Um, and I kind of felt that way about a lot of the moments, like really great intro. Like I was in at that. Um, mm -hmm. And then it just, it felt like, you know, if you wave formed out the energy of this uh, film, like it comes up really hot, dips back down to still, still story. And it just is a gradual, gradual, gradual decline. Uh, and a lot of that, like what John said, had so much to do with just the length of, of what the film was like, <clears throat> put this at six 30 and it's super, super engaging. And, um, but I, I thought it told the story well, uh, to kind of go back to something Lindsay had said earlier that I had written down was like, there just was a lot of toast content, but it felt like you just had to use that to get, you know, where you needed to go without it turning into a slideshow. Um, so, uh, I totally get why you would have, would have had to do that, but those are really my only notes on the story. I, I, I liked it. I went three and a half on that. Yep. I also gave it a three and a half. I thought it was solid, but there were certain things that held it back from being better. Um, and I guess this is kind of dipping in to editing a little bit, but the, uh, the hype intro was really great and it like, it hooked us. Right. Yeah. But, um, I don't know, like, did that really even fit the couple a little bit? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't think it did, you know, kind of like, kind of like the black and white and the, and the, you know, super eight overlay, like it was almost kind of unnecessary. Um, I loved it. I thought it was great. But then as I'm watching this, I'm learning about their story and this couple and who they are. Um, I'm like, I'm like, I don't know if that was necessary, if that was more for you or for other videographers or, or was it really for the, for the couple? Yeah, that's so good. that's something to think about. Um, yeah. Three and a half. I feel, I feel like this story, this couple, like, uh, the, you could have done it, uh, really layering it in a way that like would have been really impactful. Um, thinking about how they met, thinking about all these different things, and what you're saying there, Lindsay, it really, it, it is true that they're like more of an emotional romantic couple. And it's like, if you could lead with some of like, even if you didn't lead with the first look, like what I was saying, maybe you lead with the beginning of like how they got together or how they, and like slowly build that story um, and show that off. And then like, you can hit them with those big builds, like with music. If you brought in uh, dare I say it like some chapters kind of vibe music that just really emotional and brings in, uh, you know, big moments for like, oh my goodness, this is such a build. Boom. He finally gets to see her. That's, that's a big, you know, part of act one or a big part of whatever. And then him seeing her come down the aisle, the emotion, just everything that like, feels like those moments you didn't capitalize on those. And I think that just because they were those kinds of people, it made the story feel better than in, you actually did on it. Um, like that was gold. Um, and I think if you kind of chip that up and, and manipulate that in a little bit different of a way, you could have taken that to like a five out of five on the story. I mean, they gave you the pieces you needed to make that a five mm -hmm. and we're sitting here all at three and a half. So um, it's good, but I think really thinking through, and I'm sorry, I'm talking so long, but like Lindsay's talking about like, does this serve that couple? Does that, <clears throat> It's like the more I think about it, too, as we're processing, it's like, man, we could have like this film could have had a different vibe to it and it would have probably really hit. Yep, I, I agree. I know I know Kyle uh, actually pretty well. He does a lot of weddings. He has a lot going on. And and so, it, yeah, there were certain moments where it felt like he's like, OK, I got to get this. <laughs> check I got to get this. I got to check this box. I got to yeah. get it out, you know, and totally. so. So, uh, you know, sometimes you don't have time, you know, to even put that much thought into it, but you're also asking us to critique you. So here we are critiquing yep. you. <laughs> All right. Last but not least color, Lindsay, we can start with you on color. Yeah. I, I actually changed a few times. I started off really high and then I kind of, kind of kept coming down. I'm sitting somewhere in between a three and a half and a four. Um, I, I actually liked the color. I thought it was super consistent. Exposure was really good. Um, some of the, I was looking at some of the ceremony, like the efficient in one angle looked her really orange, like really, really fake tan type orange. And then another angle looked a little bit better. So, um, that was just something I was kind of nitpicking at, but ultimately the color, like that shot of them kissing with the sun behind them. It was beautiful. Um, so yeah, I'm like in between three and a half, four, I'll, I guess I'll we go with the four. You. We can come no, back to you. You can I'll, chew on that. 
Okay. Four okay, it is. Or just do this. <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. 0.75. <laughs> if you're in favor of 0.75. <laughs> Quarter point increments. <laughs> Blake, what do you got? Um, so like the, I love the color. I thought it was really good. I thought it was really clean. Um, it felt very straight out of camera to me. Like, uh, like there was just not, I didn't feel like you were pushing the color really, really hard, which is, I think it's great. I think it was a very natural look to it. Um, uh, didn't look like you were trying to push it. It's, it had a very like, um, a Cinetone vibe to it. Like where you didn't have to do a lot of post-production on the, on the color work. It looks like you're getting a lot of your color in the shooting process, doing a lot of heavy lifting there, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, I gave it a 3.5. Uh, I thought it was like really, really good. Um, really, really clean. Something that's <laughs> your clients are really going to like. And, um, uh, I didn't have any problems with the color. I didn't, I didn't want to say anything till the very end of the stream, but if somebody will go back and count how many times Blake, the editor says, really, I need to know. I say he- really a lot i really do. Says, really 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 and if you could also count how many times i said protractor i'd appreciate that as well yes i feel and like we probably could, said the word solid a lot too like this is really could, solid if you could count how many times i said guatemala that would also be helpful <laughs> so get us back to numbers uh we'll send you a gift card for some free luts from lareb films over at gamut.io um and a free year-long subscription to his instagram um on the color i gave this a 3.5 uh, my main question again is just why choices were made, especially the black and white. Um, I, the first time I was almost going to make a note, that shot looks like it was black and white. It was so desaturated. And I was like, oh, it was black and white. And it didn't like sometimes if somebody cuts to black and white, you know, they're going back in time or they're uh, wanting to show that off in more of a fine art vibe or whatever. And it seems as though maybe you saw some people do black and white and you're like, I want to add some of this but it was kind of just like we picked some random shots to do that. It made sense when it transitioned from black and white to color, when she's coming down the aisle, although stylistically not what I would have done. It was intentional feeling on that shot. Um, And then I kept feeling like there were some, uh, you know, like on the color, I'm going to also throw in there super eight and then maybe some light leaks that felt a little artificial. Uh, Maybe I'm wrong, but there were a few of them in there. Yeah. I, but that, I think that's more editing, you know, like those right. are editing choices, you know, again, yeah. and there needs to be some sort of intention, you know, a light leak would have been more appropriate on the shot where the sun's coming through their face, you know, when they're, they're kissing mm-hmm. versus just like sure. them standing in, in the tent. Under, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or on, you know, in, in the yard, like you want it to be motivated or, or intentional. Um, and I think and I we think, do that. Yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think the, the black and white, I would have, I would have been cooler with a black and white if you had used the black and white that's included in the Lorev Films LUT pack available at Gamut. <laughs> no, where could they go? Yeah, uh, Gamut. That's a, okay. that's a Gamut. Gamut.io, and mm-hmm. it is the best black and white LUT you'll ever, you'll ever. It's pretty uh, nice. <laughs> the one I use is I just get the fader over there on the Lumetri saturation. color, and I just just yeah, I just turn it all the way down. It just no. does it. No, um, it's not the but, same. Overall, like I wrote intro equals dope. That was the thing I wrote <laughs> and the thing. The film itself was, I think, very solid. It I was. know that the couple was super happy with it. Um, good job on this. It did feel the length was too much. It felt like you were maybe checking the box, getting it done, getting it out the door. But good job overall. Um, my total score was a 17 on this one. Yeah, mine was an 18. 17 and a half. Mine was 17.5. I'm having a hard time at math today, guys. These maths. Great Um, job, Kyle. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. And, and Kyle's a good dude too. He's a good dude. That matters. He's, he's somebody that, uh, I can, I can tell like people love having him at, at their wedding. If you've ever had a chance to, to meet Kyle. I also want to give, I also want to give, uh, this wedding film extra points because the bride's name was Tyler. I'm really cool with, you know, people with unisex names, you know, mm-hmm. uh, yes. Yes, coming Lindsay. from Lindsay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just, I gave it extra credit for that as well. Okay, good. Uh, so well. do you want to add that to your score or is that just like yeah, a, get 18 a, point, 18.5? Okay. Change okay. That, to cool, 18. Cool. Well, that bumped him up to the honorable. No. <laughs> <laughs> just because um, of the bride's name. All right. So I just want to say thank you, Lindsay, for being here for the live stream. Yes. Guys, go check out his uh, seriously go check out his instagram subscription he's doing lots of cool stuff over there 
five bucks a month. I mean, come on, supports him. He needs it. He's not making enough on those wedding films. Um, guys, that lamp doesn't pay for itself. That electricity back there. See this lamp and, over here? No, I don't. There it is. Yes. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so, um, you know, you want to do that. Give, give that guy a follow over there. Blake, the editor, um, follow Blake Polino on the F uh, five, please. Yes. Um, Oh, wow. That's hard to focus. Um, yeah, it would have made sense for you to have it off to the side in that dark spot right on your, the of your face. <laughs> you tell us <laughs> now that you can for the it? record for the record. I did have it over here. Oh, it cuts over you here. down when we put it. Okay, yeah, that's right. It. But I when I but I was okay. limited when we were on the side. You yeah, know. I got gotcha. you. Okay. I, I, put, that makes sense. I put this up because our subscription is only five dollars. That makes sense. Yes. Well, thank you for being on and thank you for being pretty good at what you do both of you and uh we missed nick but we'll have him back next month for our march live stream and then one last time love stories tv thank you for sponsoring today's live stream it's really hard to focus while that five is moving around but that's okay and if you're Can watching this live this if you're watching this live or in uh the next week or so march 3rd the deadline 11 59 eastern so I'm, I'm gonna keep going uh you can submit for the love stories tv film awards cash for cash for winning those things i submitted this year i i don't know guess which film it was i'm not telling uh what <laughs> yeah, exactly all right uh everybody have a great day and until next time we'll see you bye guys see you later see ya see ya